If you don't stay down and you never quit, come on over here and sit on the far end of the bench. I'm much too young to feel this damn old. What is up, Ben Schwarbers? It is episode 177 of the Far End of the Bench podcast. Jimmy Pilato and Nico Bryant here, presented by the Variety Sports Network. Um, we're back with uh, yet another. We're going to recap March Madness. There's WrestleMania to talk about. We're going to talk. You're, you're looking at two coaches. I am literally right, like right out of wrestling practice. After we re- finish recording here, I need to go shower badly. Um, because I, I can just feel like the skin fungus just sitting on my back. And, you know, if you've ever been in a wrestling room, it's, it's the toughest place in the world, but it's not the cleanest place in the world. And Nico is now back now that his voice is healed. He's back on the sidelines coaching his, uh, youth lacrosse team. So we are two coaches. Um, we are pushing, you know, midnight oil, everything like that. We've said it a couple of times. We sleep in May slash, what do we say? August was August, August when we uh, could sleep. September, yeah. Preseason. If you're working. NFL preseason, yeah. NFL preseason. So NFL pre-season. You're not really sleeping. I'm. I, I will tell you. I don't know what it is. I I was like booked solid all day. So school obviously all day. Nico CMAS testing. Yay! That's, um, that, I, that was, as, a, that is a, that that was a, a group. Student. That is a group of letters I never want to hear again, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you very much. As it, as bad as it was as a student, Nico, it is it's ten times worse, worse as a teacher. I can't do any. You know what I did? I got one of those little grip things that it's the elastic that you go like this. So I'm just going to be, cause I, I literally, I can't read the book. I can't grade papers. I have to walk around, but I can't look at the computer screens. Like I'm, I'm just going to be walking around and switching back and forth from right hand to left hand. Right. That, I'm going to be like Popeye at the end of you this. You used to be able to read a book or something or, or do something. Man. The I'm teacher, just... the teacher apparently has never been able to, cause I said, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty that sure that my teacher used to. And they're like, no, that's never been a thing. You've always had to actively proctor the test. I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. You tell you tell every single teacher that I ever did growing up to that, okay? Yeah. No, that, that, uh, Mr. That, Weiss put on March Madness during our final. I don't know. What are we talking about here? Yeah. He's like, it's a senior level class. I know what you guys want to do. Uh, but we, we have a ton of great stuff coming up. And, and we're obviously um, right in the middle. Not in the middle. What, what are, how do you break March Madness? Is it just or, four, or weekends? Or, 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 four weekends? I'll use a wrestling term right now. Is we're rounding, and it's a wrestling slash baseball term because wrestling. This is obviously we're, we're going to talk a lot about WrestleMania coming up because I I have been watching replays of WrestleMania all week and I I love it. Yeah, I love it. Good. Summary, okay. Good, you know and I love the social been, media promos, but I'm going to say it's, that it's been very very good. But this is a rest. And we're, we're we're turning third base. We're rounding third base. It means we're on the home stretch. Take we're it on home. the home stretch of a rivalry or the home stretch of everything. It's not over, but but we're definitely are searching it. But yeah, look, we need to talk about the most important or or not the most important, the most watched sporting event of the weekend. No, it wasn't DJ Burns, and, and Jimmy's probably new favorite player of all time. Future Denver Nugget, great DJ Burns. It wasn't UConn domination. It wasn't Bama um, getting to the Final Four for the first time. It wasn't the foul merchant getting to the Final Four. It was Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese Monday night. And look, I, I was part of – I was one of 12.3 million viewers on Monday night. Yes, you heard that correct. 12.3 million viewers on Monday night. That is more than – any call women's college basketball game ever more than last year's 2023 NBA finals last year's more than last year's world series more than last year's orange bowl big 10 championship cotton bowl pac 12 big 12 ACC if, if the UFC is bowl, pulling 12.3 million night football, any Thursday night football game last year Jimmy yes NFL yeah. and every college football regular season game except the game that was that's how many viewers this game had monday night if you were anybody who anybody who loves the game of basketball you tuned in to watch the absolute master class of the biggest star in college sports right now and i will fight up a wall with anyone that wants to argue with me about that Caitlin clark is the biggest star in college sports right now bigger than anyone in basketball bigger than anyone in football right now only reason why it's football the names of football are up there is because of of, of the nfl draft and she is bigger than anyone right now. And she put on an absolute masterclass. 40 points, dropping buckets on Haley Van Litt and Angel Reese every time down the floor. She went for thir- she went for th- five threes in the third quarter to get her team the lead after being tied at half. It was one of the best games I've ever seen. Seriously, from an individual. I felt like I was watching prime 2015-2014 Steph Curry out here. 
legit. Because every time she stepped in, in inside the half court line, you felt she was in the range. You felt like it was going to go in. That's how good this girl is and how great of a basketball player she is and what she's done to transcend the, the college women's basketball game. And, and look, you obviously had the storylines of this being last year's uh, championship, um, March Madness championship final rematch with Angel Reese and LSU returning and Kim Mulkey and everything that's happened over there and a lot of big-time storylines. But Caitlin Clark and, that, and the, the Iowa Hawkeyes team just came out firing in the segment. Now. And she absolutely dominated and – like I said, people want to say what they want about women's sports and everything. Look, I, I, I cannot I cannot sit here and tell you that I sit here and watch every college women's basketball game. I cannot sit here and tell you I watch a lot of college women's sports or women's sports in general outside of when it comes to the Olympics and gymnastics UFC. and gymnastics, that kind of stuff. UFC. That's where most of my women's sports intake comes from. But Kayla Clark is worth the admission of watching watching a Monday night game as, as opposed to a Monday night Celtics versus Lakers Monday, a game. It, she really is that big of a draw, and and she has brought an excitement to the game that cannot be uh, uh, underspoken about. I think this is, and and there's parallels that I'll draw back to um, what you said about this being the rematch. And uh, I did the the motion. If you are watching on YouTube, which by the way, subscribe, follow at FEO TV Pod. I did the motion. I I guarantee you. Half of those logo shots came, and this was what Caitlin Clark was picturing. And if you're not watching, I'm pointing to my ring finger, and this was Angel Reese on as Caitlin Clark is walking off the floor in her face. And we talked about it because it, there was this. And honestly, it's great that we're talking about this because I'll bring it back even further. I remember the first year that we were covering a March Madness tournament when we were doing the podcast, Nico. And you remember what the story that we had to talk about for the women's so tournament? It was, it, was, room. It, was, it, it was the weight room. Yeah. It was the facilities. It was the lack of respect and just, you know, treating them like the – here's the thing. When you're a college athlete, any level, NCAA 1, 2, 3, NAIA, you are in the 0.01% of any high school athlete that has competed in your sport. These are very highly skilled all those bros had to swallow a lot of crow. The ones that say, oh, my five buddies from my frat can beat any women's basketball team. It's just physics. It's just science, bro. We're better. Like, okay, guard Caitlin Clark. See what Look, happens. I'm, I'm not going to have that conversation. That could be a conversation for another day about men's versus women's sports and, and how they would match up. Obviously, Caitlin Clark has been offered a $5 million offer deal to play in the Big Three, which is Ice Cube's league. Funny enough, she's been offered that. I, whether she takes or not, will seem to be imagined. I don't think – look, I, I think we are – It'd be very, very difficult for her to ever get to the NBA. Let's just put that out there, okay? I she gets switched on to Giannis and Jokic every other possession. It's it's a different world. Is all I'm going to say. But w- when you look at the talent level she has and the shooting ability she has, it is one of the best in the world. Plain and simple, it is one of the best in the world. Whether she could play defensively with 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 men and, and different things, that that is that is the question. But the talent she has and the talent these these women, because look. The, the four biggest stars in this tournament for women's game, uh, Juju Watkins from USC, obviously Caitlin Clark, Andrew Rich from LSU, and the Paige Beckers from, from from UConn, obviously in the Final Four as well. All four of these girls um, have transcended the way the way the women's game is said. Because, like I said, it's 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 a game that doesn't have the dunks. It doesn't it doesn't have. Um, or, uh, there's a couple out there that can dunk, but it doesn't have as much flashiness. And you have these girls pulling up from the parking lot and 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 making them consistently. And that is, like I said, it's 2014, 2015, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, um, um, KD range. That's what we're seeing. Jimmer, I, I, it is it is something to behold, and they have done an excellent job of of pro- propping her up to to be the star she is. She absolutely is the star she is. And and like I said, I I don't speak lightly when I say she's the biggest star in college sports right now because there isn't a bigger person right now that that, that is uh, bringing this viewership, that is, that is must-watch TV, that comes through in the clutch, right? Caleb Williams, we want to talk, we'll talk about the end of draft as weeks come up, but my man did not get to the Final Four. My man did not win, did win big, get big time case, games. Nico? Did what? you get a pink phone, pink phone case like Caleb no, Williams? I did not get a, no, I did not wear pink lips so I can have a pink phone case. And no, I did not, unfortunately. That was on my bucket If Sean Payton would have shown up to Dove Valley with pink – talk about a smoke screen of all smoke screens. He should have painted his nails pink just to be that, like getting all the media talking about it. 
it could, and look, that's the biggest story right now in college football too. And look, I, I we all watched, or majority of us watched the, the the college football national championship, watched the 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 final the, the the college football playoff, the four teams. And but I cannot sit here and tell you that I was satis- not satisfied, but I was I was entertained the entire time. Yeah. I sat through an entire. 40 minute because I think it's 10 minute quarters 40 minute women's college basketball game where I could not leave my eyes off the screen seriously I cannot say that has ever happened I I, I, I hate saying this but I cannot say that's ever happened to me where I've and to sat through an entire women's basketball game and 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 not felt like I need to look at my phone or, or or play a game on phone or do something or or whatever it may be I could not take my eyes away from this game and that shows to the talent these women have have and 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 what they what the game women's game of basketball especially because like what women's sports it, it's it's been dominated by gymnastics it's been dominated by softball and those things and basketball has always been that third or fourth sport and with the, with basketball being the second or in soccer obviously being another sport with women's basketball becoming as great as it has been, it's it only grows the game even further in Europe and, and across this country, and it's great to see. And, that, and having two cousins and having fr- having friends in the past that, that, that have played women's basketball, it's it's fantastic and fantastic to see. Women's sports is on a different level, and it's growing at such an exponential rate. I saw it during the wrestling season, and, and I'm going to bring it back to the other point that I wanted to make about what this does and, and why it's the beauty of college sports. But like the women's women's sports are growing and they're just as athletic. It's so much fun. Like as a wrestling coach, I coach boys and girls. We do have a girls team in the spring and they're a lot of fun to coach because they're more, they listen. Funny enough, they listen better than boys and they actually try and put it in, into perspective. But what I was trying to say about Angel Reese and what I was going to bring up with the wrestling tournament, um, there was, a, so there's this guy, David Carnico, and he won a, fre- he was a freshman and he won a national championship. Then he made it to the finals, and he got upset by Ben Askren's guy, Keegan O'Toole, out of Missouri. And then the next season, they wrestle each other three times. David Carr beats him all three times. He loses in the national finals to that same guy. So that's two times now that he's been denied a national championship from the same person. This year, they meet up in the semifinals, and you can tell. And there was a guy that came out afterwards, and I'm sure if we talked to any of Caitlin Clark's teammates, they would say the same thing. He was his David Carr's teammate said, when we were running, I got in front of him and I said, I am Keegan O'Toole and you need to catch me every single rep. So whenever Iowa was having to run suicides, do any of that crap, like lifting at 5 a.m., coaches love to make you lift at 5 a.m. No sane person besides, I guess I guess we can debate whether or not The Rock is sane or Mark Wahlberg is sane. No sane person enjoys working out at 5 a.m., yet these coaches do that to you. I, I promise you. There was somebody in that Iowa locker room that said, Caitlin, I am Angel Reese, and I am the one pointing at my finger in your face. And every time we do a drill, you need to make sure that you feel that. And that's what the beauty of college sports is. It's that rivalry. It's having that personal, individual thing that pushes you. I I used to try and do that. I, I've looked into some sports psychology, and I'm sure that all these teams now employ at least a coach that has a background in it. But we used to – Dom and I used to be doing boxing in the offseason – and I would say, you know, Valor semifinals ended up losing. And I and that would be my motivation. That was my drive. You know, having enemies is not necessarily a bad thing. And these enemies that we saw in the wrestling tournament and this enemy that we saw Caitlin Clark overcome in this LSU game, that's why this was as compelling as it was. Because everybody has had that rival that beat you. And then that motivated you to get up off the – what does Rocky say? It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you could get hit. And keep uh, this is I. I'm sure if I was on TikTok in Iowa over the weekend, that's all the edits. It's Caitlin Clark pulling up from just inside half court. It's how hard you can get hit, and as the ball swishes, and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Well, it, it's, it's awesome it, to see. It, it it absolutely has been awesome. And this final four with with Caitlin Clark versus Paige Beckers and 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 uh, UConn versus Iowa in the semifinals. Like I said, you thought Angel Reese and LSU was a game. These two girls are, are some of the most skilled I've ever seen. And, then, and like I said, I'm excited for the men's Final Four, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But this woman's Final Four has all the star making. And like I said, Kaylin Clark, she'll, she's going to continue. And whether that be in the Big Three or WNBA or whatever, or if she stays the size of stay on college for another year, whatever it may be, she has all the makings to be the next biggest star in, in, in Amer- North American sports. Um, yeah, the other uh, semifinal. So it is Iowa, UConn, like you said, Paige taking on Caitlin Clark, and then South Carolina, NC State. I'm not going to press you too much because, like you said, you don't watch a ton of women's college basketball. 
is there a possibility? So we know that Paige Becker is good enough. UConn's a good enough program that they they can pull off the upset against the Superwoman and, and Caitlin Clark in this NC State South Carolina matchup. Are they playing for a shot at second place, or are those teams also good enough to take home the, the title? South the South Carolina is is the best team in college women's sports. Let's 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 don't let Don Staley has done with that team in South Carolina. They are the UConn of the present. They continue to put out teams. They're they're the favorite. Look, they go into a game against UConn or, or Iowa in the in the championship game. They'll be the favorite. I, 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 and I won't speak lightly because Don Staley has done a hell of a job with that team. They have a very very tough test in NC State, but they should they will absolutely be the favorite. It's going to be a war, all four games. And but look, I it it like I said, you have a wild card when you're UConn. You have a wild card when you're Iowa. Um, South Carolina is a very very good team. They are top to bottom one of the best teams in the country. Very similar to UConn as opposed on the men's side, as opposed to like a Zach Eady in Purdue or 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 DJ Burns in NC State. It's a lot different that way, and they have, you have a wild card that can go off and and and, and produce for you. But South Carolina can absolutely win this thing. Would not be surprised if they're in the championship game. And I'm not saying they're going to walk through NC State, but I think I'd be very surprised if they don't at least beat them by double digits. And then whoever comes out of this war between Beckers and, and Clark, I think. Is going to have to have a show. It's going to have to go off and, and and have a great performance against a team in South Carolina that is well tested and, and and a very very good team in March slash April because I get it technically is April. I know when it, it's when the calendar you don't want to win in March really. You want to win in April. That's it's a misnomer when we say it's it's March madness. It's really just spring madness. Um, as we said, we're rounding third base. Do you have your one shining moment? Moments picked out what they're going to use in the montage. I know that you basketball heads like to try and predict all this shit. Uh, I'm not. You- I'm not going to predict it, but obviously the faces of it will be uh, DJ Burns and Jack Golke, and then obviously I bet you Zach they have Eady. that dude from North and Carolina, and probably Zach Eady, shoot, Zach Eady shooting free throws also because you know he shoots. He shot 400 free throws um, the, the the entire season. Yeah, that's because that's his one shining moment. Zach Eady at the free throw line. Um, if you don't get the joke, just pull up our Twitter and you'll see my thoughts on Zach Eady. But yeah, I look there. There's there, this tournament has been filled with it, and it's Final Four in Phoenix. I I, I seriously think that that th- look. I love the NC State story. I love it. I really do not think that they can win the national championship. It's it's going to be a Jimmy Valvano type run in nineteen whatever. When, that's the last time Nancy State has made the final four. It's been a long, long time. It's going to have to be, take that big of a miracle because I love DJ Burns, but Zach Eady is seven foot four in the post. There's not like you're gonna be bullying him around. Is all I'm gonna say. It's, I think he's already walking into the game with three fouls because DJ it, Burns he plays defense like I used to play defense. It's, he doesn't. It's, it it's a lot bad. of contact. It could get bad. It could get bad. And I hope that the refs in Arizona for this Final Four at least let the Bulls play a little bit because, like I said, that it's going to be two two dogs in the paint going at each other. Let them fucking go. It's like you said. You see, you, you see, you see two kids in the cage, uh, cage fighters out there, and and they're two absolutely rabid animals. And you just let them go. You, you, there's no way of stopping them. You let them go, and you try to slow it down. It's not going to work, and no one's going to be here to watch you. Plain and simple. Um, and so I, I, but look, I expect Purdue to come out top. They're a better team, and and look, like I said, the foul merchant over there is is. It's figured out. They figured out a way to build around him, be able to shoot around him. How they manage up in the national championship will remain to be seen. But this other side, I think, is the most compelling matchup because this Alabama team, between Mark Sears and and and, and the big boy, the big guy in the middle, number twenty five, can't think of his name off the top of my head. I think they have the talent and the, and the speed to keep up with UConn. That's that's the problem with teams that face with UConn is they people have not been able to keep up with their speed and, and how they've been able to defend them. Nico, hasn't UConn won nine straight tournament games by at least double digits? Yes, by nearly 50 po- 15 points each. Yes. It's, okay. It, 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 I just wanted to make sure that, that, hey, Jimmy knew something about the NCAA tournament. And it, how it, 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 is, it is absolutely a crazy streak that they're on. And you look at the people they met, they lost to last year, and the fact that they're still doing this to everybody they faced, I mean, it, it is – absolutely crazy to think about. But like I said, this UConn team may be just a man on a mission. And the fact that they are currently still stuck in Connecticut because their 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 airline or whatever or their 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 airline that the, that the school set up for them isn't leaving on time and it's not working out for them. That that was a story today coming out. And Alabama's 
currently practicing at GCU, weirdly enough. They're, that, they're using our practice facilities oh in Arizona. It, it, look, it, it, it usually happens when, when – when This feels like fighting happen. Brazilian in Brazil in the UFC. Like they're pumping gas into the opposing person's locker room. They're just – and Danny Hurley, really here's the thing. <laughs> Danny Hurley's gonna use all of it, and he's gonna be yeah. like, "Oh, they fucking, they fucking hate us." He's gonna. That's go the back. best part. That's 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 Dan Hurley. The Hurleys do that burn anybody, anybody. And and look, I, I listened to him on PMT, and that was the he was basically like, "You come to me on this. You tell me that I can't fly out on time." You want me to play all the way across? You're just trying to f me over, aren't you? You just don't want to see me succeed. And and for those thinking Jimmy's trying to do an Italian accent, no, that is literally a Dan Hurley accent. That that he he talks like that. That's just he he talks like he's a fucking New Yorker, New Jersey motherfucker, and 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 and, and, a, and a Long Island fucking uh, loser as they or Long I Island. Loser. I'm Long from Island. Long Island. A Long Island douchebag is is what they call him back up there, and that's literally what he sounds like. And like I said, you give this team any sort of bulletin board material. Man, I, it's bad news. Is all I'm gonna say. It's bad news. And and look, I I I am I'm, I'm hoping for a UConn versus Purdue national championship because I think there's one team that can slow down Zach Eady, and it's Donovan Klingon and UConn. I, I think Klingon has the has a chance to slow down Eady because of his size and how good he is in the post. Um, I think DJ Burns is a great talent and he's a big boy, but. He's not seven four. He's six foot nine. <laughs> let's let's not forget about that. that. Is giving up seven inches? Pause. But that's quite a bit. Okay, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. That is quite a bit. Okay, and and, and giving up that much to a to, and it, it could be could be bad. Is all I'm gonna say. So I'm hoping for a UConn Purdue final because I think that would be the most most competitive final because obviously the last couple of years. Of, it's been blowouts. Let's not be honest with ourselves. Last year was a blowout. The year before that was a blowout. Like I, I want a good game. I think Purdue and Gonza and, and sorry, Purdue and UConn will give us that. Uh, yeah, I. So you've already said that Purdue is probably going to beat NC State, and there's the, if the Cinderella run continues, it's it is something to behold. Like that would be an 11 seed in the final. I can't remember the last time that that would be. It a last, the last time that happened, I believe the last the I believe was actually UConn. Um, with with Shabazz Napier, I think that might have been the last time. I, I may be wrong. On it's that, strange, but, but I do recognize no, that yeah. name. I recognize it, he was name. he was he was the year after Kemba. So Kemba happened. The whole yeah. Kemba story. They won the national championship. Then he got to the final, and I think they might have won that. They were either an eight seed or eleven seed. I can't remember. I think they might have been an eight seed the first year, eleven seed the second year. But that 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 that. that that organization and, and what well you can not organization what that school does and just pops out talent every single year it's it's crazy it's crazy and what NC State has a chance to do man it, it it's a great story to behold and like I said they're I, they're they're the, they're the Cinderella darlings that we all hope for they had no right to be in the tournament they were they were dead in the waters they were down by three going into the last ten seconds of their semifinal against Virginia with the, with their season all on they hit a game tying three to go to overtime and they knock off Virginia when go to the get to the uh, conference championship beat North Carolina get to the tournament and now they've won I think it's eight straight games in in three weeks like it's it, it, it is it is it is a story to, to tell to tell future generations about the athletic department in Raleigh deserves a huge amount of credit because NC State it, across all sports. I mean, I know that they had Philip Rivers, and that was their claim to fame for a while. Football, NC State, the Wolfpack was really good. Wrestling, they won the ACC championship. I think they've won like eleven of the last twelve ACC championships in the wrestling tournament. And now you get a Final Four appearance. This is, uh, it, it's just weird because it's like a school at NC State. I used to think that they were like Division Two. Because they were a team that just never came across, and they were always just mediocre. And they've stuck with it. I think that what they've done is they put really good people in charge of their programs. Their head coaches are insane. Like their wrestling coach, I know Pat Papalizio wrestled at Oklahoma State, which is the greatest American wrestling program in history. Better than the Olympic team. Better than everything else. They have put things in place where NC State is an athletic school. This is not just where you go to be on the coast and and hang out at Outer Banks. You are in Raleigh, and if you are an athlete, you can play here, and you can play at the next level because now we are – that's what NC State is proving that they can do. I think the Wolfpack deserve – just the athletic department as a whole deserves a huge shout-out because when you get an 11 seed in the Final Four in the March Madness tournament and you're doing what you're doing in all these other sports, you're doing the things right things the right way. In a time where everybody thinks that you have to just spend the most money and – buy the biggest recruit and get the transfer portal and everything like that. NC state has built these things from the foundation. 
I think all these teams are, are built to be successful moving forward. Football, Absolutely. basketball, wrestling, softball, baseball. I think they were in the College World Series, or at least were in contention in like a regional final. It, it's a huge turnaround with that athletic program. Absolutely. It, it, and like I said, this is a program that was it was once really, really good, right? NC State was a powerhouse way back when. It wasn't North Carolina. Uh, it was North Carolina Duke, but they were right there in terms of in terms of basketball royalty with Valvano and what they did in the past. But he's been he's been, like I said, this program, it's it's something to behold. And like I said, there's there's two schools with two teams in the final four, right? UConn men's and women's are in the final four, and and also NC State's men's and women's are, are in the final four. That's, that's 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 something that doesn't happen every year. It does not happen every year. It's very rare that you get one of those, let alone two. And and like I said, it's it goes to show what the level of basketball these schools have become and and and, and what can happen in March because it's it's built for great stories. Uh is your bracket so I have UConn I mean, winning. One of I, your brackets have, I, have I, UConn I, as the champion. My I, bracket I, has UConn as the champion. My main, my main bracket has UConn as the champion. That's all I have left. I don't have any. I didn't have any other Final Four in there. I had Purdue oh, losing. I had oh, Alabama shit. losing, obviously, the GCU. And then I, I didn't have uh, – um, I did not, obviously, have NC State going that far either. So, it, it's, it's, it is different. My women's bracket, I still ha- – I had two of my Final Four. I had South Carolina. Actually, I have three of my Final Four. I had – I had uh, UConn, I had Iowa, and I had South Carolina. So that that bracket is doing much much better than my men's bracket. But yeah, my bracket's not dead, but it's not alive. It's not. It's not. It's it's breathing its last breath. <laughs> I'm 17th out of 20. Nico, did I mention I know absolutely jack shit about college basketball? Did I say that when we were making our picks on the bracket? I, I just, hope I, I said that. I'm just happy my bracket did better than my dogs. Okay, and I'm glad it did better than Burton's because Burton. I think that Burton and I would be like scrounging for 18th place in the VSN group. Uh, it's so. Oh Jesus! I think what I the way that I described it, I was your girlfriend picking based on which mascot could beat who in a fight, and for some reason, I thought Tom Izzo was going to go all the way to the final four. It was a nice. It day. happens. It was, they had, like I said, they had they had a, they had a fifteen point lead in the first half against North Carolina, and then all shit. If you all. listen to me for basketball advice, what are you doing? You you need to shape up. The doctor, what are you doing? Yeah, maybe it didn't help. Do it something. Help. Be better. Nico's the basketball guy. Um, any anything else stand out from the weekend of March Madness? I know that it's it's always a little bit bittersweet when you get towards the end, but. What, what have you seen so far? I, I think it's been a very entertaining tournament, and we're getting – yes, there's a possibility that Purdue comes out and absolutely waxes NC State, but I think that we're going to get competitive Final Four games. And it, if they can get a competitive championship, I think this is – because there's always the debate. Is March Madness better than bowl season? And bowl season always brings in most viewers and the most money. If you can get a competitive matchup in this tournament, it feels like you might be able to elevate your status – Everybody loves March Madness anyways, but if you don't have that extra blowout in in the title game and, and it's an actual – because think back to the college football playoff. Michigan dominated Washington. Michael Penix had nothing to do with the Wolverines defense. If you can get the most competitive college championship – that would go a long way for how good this tournament has been. But what do you and, think about this tournament three quarters of the way and, through? And, and, to, and to argue with you for a second about that, look, the first two days of March Madness, the round of 64 has way more viewers than the non upper level, up, upper echelon bowl games. There's zero denying that because the first two college basketball, nearly everybody has that on their TV and, and, the, and the numbers have been great. But yeah, we, um, but look, the national championship, obviously, and as you get to the later rounds, it doesn't get as compelling because it's not unless you have the DJ Burns or Jack Oakey to the world, Cinderella's, it doesn't get as compelling. But like I said, having a Purdue versus, versus uh, UConn uh, national championship in the men's and having the Iowa versus the South Carolina women's national championship, I think will go a long do a long, long way with with uh, bringing in a lot of viewers. Because like I said, what this women's uh, game I spoke about with with LSU and Iowa did for the game game of basketball in general, not just women's basketball, game of basketball in general, is great for the game. And like I said, it, it, it does not hurt anybody to have, as our, as our boy likes to say, big-time storylines going into the national championship. I think that that will add so much more juice to the fire. It's going to be a huge weekend. Um all right, it's weird because normally the Final Four is Easter weekend, and it's a little bit behind this year in the sports calendar. Uh, but I think what the way that it's actually going to work out is we're going to get the Final Four national championship happens. On, is it the Tuesday or is it the Monday after the Final Four? 
it's a Monday, so the I think the women's game is on Tuesday. The men's game is on is the on the following Monday because the and then by Wednesday, I yeah. believe we're into NBA and NHL playoffs. So, so I don't I don't think I don't think the playoffs are, are aren't until the following week after that. I think because but 60, the, I think that regular season right games are going to be over. We're going to yeah, be in it, like playing tournament for it's for right NBA. at the beginning. It's right at the end. Yeah, it's right at the end. It's it, I I am. <laughs> Somebody asked me today, like, you're so busy. Like, what, what do you do? I'm very good at, like, compartmentalizing my suck. And, and I've read enough, like, I've read Lone Survivor. I've read enough of the SEAL books where they're like, you just have to put yourself in and embrace the suck that you're in, knowing that it's going to get better and you're going to get into a different suck. The playoffs, I I sincerely hope, and I hope that we don't do the same thing to the team that we're just about to get started talking about. But we put a jinx on the avalanche. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But we lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets 4-1. And we lost to Montreal right before that. Apparently, Valnid, I know that you love the choo-choo train. But apparently, if he's not on the ice, we're no better than the Columbus Blue Jackets. No, this, the, yeah, for whatever reason, like I said, there's a reason why he, I think he's such an X factor to this team because he adds so much, so many more dimensions to this team that they don't have offensively and defensively. But you know, look, it, it was it was not good. It was not good at all. It was not good at all. And, and look, maybe it's a good thing because last year's close of the season for the Nuggets was not very good. Um, we had the number one C locked up, and we did not finish the season. I think we lost to Utah at the end of the season, and I think we lost to. I have Washington or whatever. And then you look at the Avs too. I think when we went on our run, I don't think we finished the season red hot. So maybe it's better to get these, get this bad juju out right now. Look, look, you have to think positive, positively. I am, I, I like to, like I said, you, we brought up Ted Lasso earlier in the show. But nothing but positivity because it's better to do this right now. Last two yeah. weeks of the season, whatever it may be, last 10 games, whatever it may be, it's better to get. All the all the all the dirty shit out in the air, because because you don't know it's, what to think bad. until you get there. It's, I know it's bad. I know that it's penalty bad. on George, on Georgiev, I've never been so mad at a goaltender. And, and he was very. And, and, a, and then yeah, turn around in the Columbus game. The only reason why I'm okay with the Columbus game is that it wasn't Georgiev, your starter, that you're going to be relying on for all of these playoff games that got beat four to one. It was used to standing in, who was due for a game like this because. I believe he's like 22. I think he's 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 so, so – people young. don't realize. These hockey players are so young. Yusuf Ananen, I think that he's going to be a decent enough backup for a playoff run, but he is still a kid, and he still does have a lot to learn. So I, I guess that's the only silver lining that I've been taking out of that. And we weren't even planning on talking about the avalanche, but I was listening. I told you. I was listening to our boys, Griffin and, and Christian, over at Tell It As It Is. I thought they were playing a, a verbal prank because they don't do a YouTube side of their show. I thought they were trying to get everybody to go for the first five minutes and say the Avs lost to the Blue Jackets. I was like, there's no way. There's no way. And I pulled up the ESPN app, and there was a way. Uh, yeah, look, were, like I said, with Nuggets had a, had a – we, we – we almost lost to the 19 and 40 something San Antonio Spurs on Monday night, the game I went to. So it's, it's good. It's good to get this out right now. It's very, very good to get this out right now. That's how I'm going to positively spin it. That's how I'm going to positively hope for it. Cause like I said, I don't, I, look, 129, 8, and 15 are on the ice or on the floor for me. I, I think that, uh, I, I think, I think good things can happen. Is all uh, you, you mean 13. No, I'm saying Nuggets, like 29. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yes. I've been 15 for the Nuggets. When those three are on the court slash ice for, for my teams, I always have a belief that we will win. Plain and simple. I will always have that belief. Um, let, Let's talk about that Spurs game, and, and this is a good chance. We haven't really talked about them much because the Spurs, they suck. they're, they're not good. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> they There's a one. reason why they have the number one overall pick, and they may get another top five overall pick to put with him. But – um. Women Yon has been interesting because they he had all the hype. It's really, really strange. Basketball and hockey are where you can kind of see the, the disconnect because obviously basketball and hockey are more international sports. Uh, I love I, – I just love the mindset of, like, these European players and the fact they go and play professional basketball. They don't go to college. When you go to college, you're dealing with everybody else who's got midterms, homework, girlfriends, partying. Yeah, you're, you're not playing a, gr a grown man fighting for his food. Yeah. There's a difference. 
So Victor Wimignana coming in from this French professional league, there's already a leg up there. And, I mean, talk about physical gifts. I don't know. who's. Have you ever seen a better body type for basketball? Like just long. I, I know that he still needs to fill out like muscle-wise to be able to play where he plays. But just uh, what, what, what I wouldn't give to – I would – I would just take an inch of his wingspan. I have little tiny short stubby Italian arms. I would give an inch, one inch of his wingspan and I would I don't want to tell you what I would do for that kind of stuff. He is I, the, the, the the one argument I will have about about his body type, the pro, the, the greatest body type an in individual NBA basketball player has ever had and it will never be touched is Prime Shaq. And I'm talking Orlando Magic and the Los Angeles Lakers Shaq. You look You're at talking how, Superman. You're looking. You're you talking about the strongest motherfucker, the the biggest motherfucker on the court, and and there was not a physical. There, look, you look at those pictures of him and his biceps. They look. He looks like he was a fucking Phil Heath out there and fucking bodybuilding. Okay, and he was on the basketball court dominating at whoever he wanted to at six. What was that seven. movie he was in? Blue Chips. I remember seeing him in Blue Chips, and I was like, Jesus, Shaq looked like that. Yeah, that that <laughs> is that is the that is the epitome of. The best body type ever for basketball, but Wembenyama at seven foot four in this long length, he is going to be. Look, I, I, I highly doubt that the A was going to test him for this. Gobert may be the only person. He is going to be the first individual to win Rookie of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year since I think Jordan in in the eighties. It has been a long time since someone has won Rookie of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year in the same year, and I think that I, I think it's a full blown conclusion. This man, Jimmy. In one season in basketball, one season in basketball, one season in NBA, has more blocks than 85% of the players that have ever played the game of basketball in the NBA. 85% in one season of Limon Yama. I, I, watching, watching, watching him Monday night, I literally saw Jokic miss shots on purpose because he knew Wemby was there so that he could get the rebound so he could get out of the way. That's what I was watching. I was watching Jokic be like, fuck, every shot that I pull up, if it's not a damn moon ball in the air, it's going to get blocked. You step into the paint in the realm of Wembenyama, it's going to get set back to you. Legit. I saw – look, look, look I, 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 and I get that the Spurs are absolutely ass, but Wembenyama is worth the price of admission. He, there's only – and I tweeted this out. There's only four guys in the league today that I wouldn't trade him for. Only four guys. Then as you, Luka – uh, Jokic and being honest, everybody else I wouldn't hesitate. Maybe KD is in that conversation. Did you realize everybody that those else. are all international players? I, I'm well aware of that because that's where the game is at right now, and the international game is is different. But I would not, I would not hesitate hit trading for LeBron. I would not hesitate trading for Stephen Curry. Okay, I would not. I, I, would not I would not. I would not. I would not hesitate trading him for a uh, uh, Devin Booker or or or, or, or you insert John Morant. I would hesitate. Because him at twenty one years old, I think right now maybe he's twenty. He's twenty. He hasn't he's even. 20. He hasn't even he turned twenty one. We are going to see fifteen years of the face of the NBA in this guy. I'm serious. I am dead serious. He is the. He look. It went from. It went from Jordan to Kobe. Kobe to LeBron. LeBron to probably Giannis. Giannis to fucking Wembenyama for the next 15, 20 years. I look. Look. The fact that we got a championship before this motherfucker decided to, to to come in the league before and run the and and run the show, I am so thankful for. I am so thankful for it. because once San Antonio figures out how to put a team around him, it's going to be very very bad news. Is all I'm going to say. Because right now I went look. I I was watching the game and, and I had no idea who the fuck these people are. I knew Trey Jones, the point guard, and you're talking to to Mr. NBA Encyclopedia over here. I know majority of the guys on most of the rosters in the league. Okay, and I could tell you probably 95 percent of the starting fives in the NBA right now, off the top of my head. Um, if I if I if, if it weren't based off of injuries and who's not playing, who's been playing, one eight hundred gambler, playing. folks. It's not gambling. It's just because I've I know. lost so much. No, I, I, I know. You're it's, you're sick with it, like me with college I, I wrestling because I watch literally sick. every single one. But and, I, I get it. And because I'm saying, and look, and because I'm so sick with how much basketball I watch, I know what I'm talking about. Levin Yama will be the face of this league. He will be. If he stays healthy and, and, and his legs, and look, that's the problem with guys at 7 4. Because you look at what happened to Shaq, you look at what happened to Yao, you look at what happened to Manute Bull. They didn't have longevity because the knees, then being that tall, was so difficult on them. And maybe, and maybe, just maybe, his slenderness and his weight plays into his longevity. 
because if he's seven foot four and weighs so much, that could end up hurting his knees even more and hurting and having feet problems and all these things. So maybe it's better for him to stay this way where he's a long, lengthy motherfucker. Okay, maybe that helps him. Ten, like fuck, like two ten. I, it's because it's, it's literally because of his height. It's literally be, it, 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 it's crazy. That even still, the that tall is two ten. Even, even still, if he was six four two ten, I'd at least expect him to be as thick as Aaron Gordon. Yeah, man. I'm glad. This this he and, he's and got to he have dense bones or something. He he is going to be everything and and so much more. And like I said, I hope he doesn't bulk up because I, like I said, I think that could hurt his longevity. I hope he gets stronger in the post because I think he's pretty. What I saw on Monday night against Jokic and Aaron. Excuse me, and Aaron Gordon in the post showed me quite a bit, but I think he has a long way to go. And but once the Spurs build around him, I fear, <laughs> I fear, I fear for for us, I fear for a lot of teams in the West because it's going to be, it's going to be Steph Curry level. It's going to be, it's going to be Tim Duncan, prime San Antonio Spurs level. It's going to be Jordan level. The amount of Western Conference Finals and amount of amount of years that this man is going to dominate the league, and and, and I hate and it's weird saying that as a twenty, uh, him being a twenty year old, but that's a, that's that's a projection of this dude, and 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 that's how highly I think of him. The French haven't been this aggressive since Napoleon. This is insane. The French, I don't know what the French put in the water twenty years ago, especially with Gobert and Wembenyama, but it's worked for them. Ever since yeah. when once once Tony Parker became a became a legend, the state of France said, "Holy shit." Let's start breeding seven footers, and, and and we and we we can take over NBA basketball. And and they went in their and went in their machine, and they figured. I it am out. going to. I'm going to breed with that seven foot blonde woman you see over there, and she's going to produce me a NBA center. I just watched. Trust me. Okay, I'm going to put my fifteenth cigarette out for the day. Thank you. And look, there's and and because of Wamadjama, because of Luca, because of Jokic, because of Mbappé and Giannis. We are seeing NFL drafts where I don't know who the fuck these dudes are. Plain simple. I don't know who NBA? the fuck these dudes are. NBA drafts, yes. NBA drafts where, where I'm looking at the top drafts and I'm like, who the fuck are you? Like, like the best player out in college basketball this year has been Zach Eady. Zach Eady right now is projected to be a late first round pick, second round pick. Two years ago, three years ago, Luca Garza, Naismith Player of the Year, highest scoring basketball, college basketball player of all time, wasn't drafted until the, the 62nd pick. He doesn't get yep. run in Minnesota. Like uh, we, I, I, I remember talking about this. The, the wave of, of talent in college basketball is unfortunately getting passed by because these Europeans and and what Kobe and what what the, what the what honestly I I I, I love relating everything back to the Olympics because I think Olympics is so impactful, especially for the game of basketball. What what the dream team did in '92 with, with with teams and what the redeemed team did in 2008 and and, and going over and, and playing high level basketball with all the best talent in the world, it adds to the game. It really adds to the game because, like I said, there isn't another sport outside of Canada and hockey because I don't really count that because it's not really international. It's just fucking north of us. We talk about look, international. I, I would disagree with that because look at Finland and look at Sweden and look at look, all these. I, I think basketball, hockey, and I would say soccer is still number one of the best international sports in the world. And I still think it's basketball and, 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 and uh, basketball. And, We're forgetting and, and, about the Cubans soccer. and Dominicans and baseball. baseball it's true. It, like, I don't really think, obviously think about that. Cause we literally do not talk about baseball on the show for a reason. <laughs> There's a lot I posted a meme today. Go, oh, go follow at FEOGB pod. There's a reason we don't talk about baseball <laughs> until the summer. And that's because it's sunny and There's I can go hiking else. and forget about <laughs> Shit. And there's nothing else to talk about. Literally, that's that's literally PLL. I'm not the only reason why we talk about that is because I work for them. Okay, it's literally nothing else. So uh, look, I I think those sports and, and, and what what basketball has become, especially internationally, it is crazy to see. What well, Bianca is absolutely a taste of that. Uh, it's uh, and two, there's been a couple times. It, I, it was actually a, the Chicklets podcast, but like thinking about those European players and like all these hard ass coaches, like. Think of a guy like Michael Malone. His team, as we're sitting here now, is tied for number one in their conference with Minnesota. They've been, I, I would say, like, we, we all said it. Like, we don't care whether we get the number one seed, whether we have home court advantage throughout the playoffs. This is a team that's kind of, like, geared. If they don't do it this year, it, it's a monumental disappointment. As disappointed as we used to be before they won their championship when they would get eliminated – this would be a huge disappointment. 
and you think about Mike Malone and, and the way that he coaches and how in your face he is. I feel like the international players are that way. I'm just I, this is the so, social studies teacher coming out coming out to me. But like, think about what they have to go through. All these European hockey players go, "Oh, you think you're going to yell at me?" I used to have to dodge bombs to go to school. Yeah, I used to have to like walk around craters because there was some guy. That was, you know, there's some military operation and my street was no longer there. So I had to find a new way to get to the rink. You are not scaring these guys. So as much shit as I give to the French about their military strategy and like not being aggressive since Napoleon. Uh, I think the fact that he played at a professional level, the fact that uh, what's the movie? It's Hustle, right? Hustle with Adam Hustle Sandler. With Adam Sandler yeah. If you have not watched that movie and you were trying to get into the NBA, Watch that movie because the speech that he gives, like, you can be talented. Are you obsessed? These European players have to be obsessed. We don't see them. You have 40 or 50 scouts going out, millions of – it was a whole – like, the movie was great because you get to see the whole side of scouting and the fact that these guys travel, and you're not just traveling, say, Washington to – California, you're traveling Washington to Uzbekistan and Azerbaijan, and you're going to go into this little ringy ding town in this little communist country here and see if there's a guy wearing Timberland boots that can dunk and he's seven foot four. Like the NBA, you can't even talk about any other sport. Like you, you can talk about basketball. The talent level that we see outside of the country, yes, the I I would feel like you know. It, it's America. America gave the sport what it is. Like Michael and the U.S. Jordan, and look, the U.S. Will, the U.S. will dominate in Olympics. Let's not forget, okay? When when you throw Anthony Edwards, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Joel Embiid, technically he's from the Congo, but he's playing for Team USA. When you put that team out there, there's not there's not a single roster that is going to test that is going to test that. Spain did that with with the Gasol brothers and the Rudy Fernandez and the uh, uh, um, and, and 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 the Jose Calderons of the world when when they upset us in in 04. But there's no one that tests it. There's 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 not a full roster that will test it. There's zero denying that. But when you look at individual talent and, and, and the level of some of these players and what they've become, it absolutely is a testament to what the Olympics has continued to do, and that's build the game globally. And going and like I said, going to different countries, playing in different countries, and doing all these things has absolutely helped. But like I said, the, the US is always going to be fucking king. It's going to be king. Are we playing the, France though? Because we're, we're in Paris. Do you think that the French team is going to be like Fran, on mission? France, France may be one of the best tests because obviously Wemby and and uh, Wemby and Gobert will be okay. there in front of that. But if you have Embiid and you have some of these other fucking how does that work? Yeah. I don't I don't understand how it works. I don't have I don't understand how any of that works. But it it, it you it, used to it, work it, for an Olympic sport. If you have citizenship, you can play for the team. If you if you haven't committed citizenship, that that's that it's. Very, very tricky. It depends on the sport. Is all I'm going to say. It's I'm not going to go into detail. It, it does depend on the sport have, because, have, like I said, have have the, have, the U.S. has qualified half of Mexico's Olympic wrestling. Roster. Exactly. You you have to have citizenship. You have to have, I think, certain amount of res, residency. You have to live there for a certain amount of years. Something along those lines. I don't know. It different. Literally, every sport is different in its own right. Literally, it is. Each each sport has their own weight qualifications levels of it. Wrestling does. Basketball does. Uh, taekwondo. Swimming, they all have their different things, and it, it's it's literally it's literally because of. of uh, I want to petition the NHL to then have Nathan McKinnon on the same line as Austin Matthews and Patrick Kane. I mean, well, I mean, would you rather that, or would you rather put him on line with Connor McDavid and Sidney Crosby? Because I think that may. I don't want it. I don't. I'm not. I'm not I singing Oh Canada, Nico. I I'm am not, not singing Oh Canada. I'm not, I'm not rooting doing for, it. I will never root for Canada in hockey, but man, I would love to see Nathan McKinnon on the same line as McDavid and Crosby. Okay, I, I'm so I happy. Almost, I'm, hey, I apparently, got, excuse me, I got this fucking close to Crosby being an Av, and I, and I almost had that dream. Okay, and it may happen still, but I still want to see that happen. Okay, it will. It will. Apparently, in the next Winter Olympics, the NHL. That's what Gary Bettman says that. now. What Gary Bettman that. says, and however long it is between next Winter Olympics, is another question, but. What he says now is that yes, the NHL will be open to playing their best on best well, in international you, competition. I hope you stick to your word, Kiri. I really hope you do. You are. Uh, here's the thing. Whether the 
it's the most competitive. Again, we're going into hockey in like a basketball segment, and I swear I'm, I'm not trying to do this. But like, see, I'm decked out in all my nuggets here. I'm not trying to do this. But if the level of talent and the level of parity that we're seeing in the NHL, it couldn't have happened at a better time when you get the new TV deal with ESPN and TNT where you're in millions more households outside of NBC and like getting kicked off the air for horse racing. The NHL is in a good spot. Gary, don't, don't go back on your word. Please. Yeah, yeah, please. I want to see it so bad. I want to see Miko and Lecky and whoever uh, I get. I That's think it's Miko, Lecky and Sebastian Ajo as the, the top line for team Finland. That's a fucking wagon. And you go to, you go, you go to, uh, this, uh, you go to Sweden with, with and you would have Victor Hedman and Roman well, Yossi as your starting Roman defense. Roman Yossi, uh, look, it's 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 the All Star game in the NHL and the NBA is is horrendous. Okay, this is as close as we will ever get, and you have to let the boys play. All right, let's talk about these NBA standings. Like I said, the Nuggets are tied with Minnesota. Are, and, and, are you still the, on the same track? Like the number one seed in the West does not matter. It, look, it's not matter, but matters is 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 matchups, and I will always stand on that. It will always be matchups, and and we do not have a tiebreaker over Minnesota or Oklahoma City. So if we have the same record as them, they both will be above us, and we will be end up being the three seed. What worries me, what worries me is is if you're the one seed, or sorry, if you're the two or three seed, there's a chance, there's a chance you have to face Dallas, or you have to face a team that I do not want to face the first round, and that's the Phoenix Suns. That's that's the biggest worry for me. If you were the one seed, you there's a good chance you could line up with the Lakers <laughs> in round one. Okay, everyone knows my thoughts on the Lakers. I don't have to keep beating a dead horse, but if you end up getting the one seed, you can possibly face the Lakers in the first round if if they're able to fight their way in through the play-in. But as the play-in sits, you have Sacramento and, and Phoenix. Phoenix was going to win tonight. They're kicking the shit out of Cleveland, so they'll be the six seed. Kings will be eight. Lakers and Golden State will be nine, ten. So. Look, you only have to, you'll have to face one of those teams, right? And you, in the worst, the best case scenario probably would be if you're not going to be, excuse me, if you're not going to be the one seed, be the three seed, and you can be, you can play New Orleans, <laughs> you can play New Orleans, or you play Sacramento, because I do not want to face New Orleans. Like I said, I do not want to face, excuse me, I do not want to face Phoenix in the first round, and and frankly, I probably do not want to face the Lakers. If but if I have to, I will. Plain and simple, okay? You want to avoid that. Because if you're if you're you're sitting right now in the playing game, who would you rather play? Would you rather play the Thunder, the, the Nuggets, or the Timberwolves? Because right now, the easy answer is Oklahoma City. They just got their shit pumped tonight or on Tuesday as recording this against Boston on the road by thirty points. When, yeah, Oklahoma Wednesday. City, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Sorry, Wednesday. I, was, I had fucking fuck up my days. Oklahoma City. Is a team that is the the Memphis Grizzlies of last year. They are yes. damn talented. They are They're damn just really talented. young. They are way too young. They are not ready. They don't have any veterans on that team. That, that They're having a high school party right now, and mom and dad are about to come home at, at the playoffs. They're going to be like, what in the fuck is going on here? And if and look, I I do not underplay Shea and Chet and and, and Jalen Williams and how good that team is because they are damn good. They beat us three times or four times already this season, or three out of four at least. And they are going to be a tough matchup. But if you're the Suns, if you're the Lakers, if you're the Kings, hell, if you're the New Orleans Pelicans, you're hoping to play them. Yeah. Plain and simple. Because look what look Minnesota is a scary team in my opinion. Minnesota scares the hell out of me. I would love to uh, for them to either have the one seed and us be two or three, or us be the one seed and then be two or three, because we avoid them into the conference championship. I I think that's the best case scenario because Anthony Edwards is a fucking killer. He is an absolute killer and scares the hell out of me. That would and just be the on, dagger, the million dagger in my heart if Minnesota ends up knocking us out of the playoffs. And that please tell me that's not going to happen. And that Minnesota team has the and I've and I've said it before the season started. I said it on on the on the NBA season. Uh, Preview with with uh, Fat Boy Fadeaway back in October or whenever that was. Minnesota scares me the most because the way they can defend Jokic and and def and have killers on the roster, it scares me. Because Tim Connolly has built that team to beat the Denver Nuggets. Let's not yeah. forget about that. 
He's, the, he's got the best have, inside track to doing so. He's the so, best yeah. inside track to do it. And you have a killer in Anthony Edwards with the second year in the playoffs. That could that could spell for bad news. So I hope to God that Oklahoma City is not the one seed and that the best case scenario, we face them in the conference finals if we both make it that far with when it comes to Minnesota. But like I said, it comes to matchups. And if I were looking at matchups, I think we can handle Sacramento in the first round. I think we can handle New Orleans. The Lakers, obviously, I don't need to continue to be a dead horse, but we own them. Um, the Warriors, Warriors could scare people. Warriors could scare me, but – can they beat the Lakers in a, in a one game play in? That's that remains to be seen because that's what it looks like it's going to happen. Um, and then, like I said, the late and when, like I said, the Suns. The Suns have three killers. <laughs> Last year it was two killers and a bunch of fuckers that had no idea what they were doing. Like I said, there's no, there's no, there's no more Doc Rivers or not Doc Rivers. It's Doc, yeah, what it was. Yeah, no. Who did Phoenix have last year? Oh, it was no more Monty Williams. It was yes, no more was Chris Paul. Yeah. It was no more Chris Paul. It was no more DeAndre Ayton. It's it's Kevin fucking Durant in his prime. It's Devin Booker healthy finally. And it's Bradley Beal, who actually has some playoff experience back in the 2010s with John Wall and those Wizards teams. The actually experienced guys. Experienced guys. And they are they are one of the most dangerous teams in basketball when they are hot. They are absolutely. And, and having Nurkic out there and having uh, uh, another defensive guy in Joshua Kogi, they they scared they they know they say can say they they scare me. So if you can avoid them, and like I said, I'm not telling you to shade games, I'm not telling you to, to fucking lose games on purpose because it's important to win games at the right time. But if you can position yourself perfectly where you do not have to face the Suns or the Timberwolves or the Clippers until possibly the second or third round, or hopefully more than likely the third round, then you set yourself up to go for a great chance to go back in the Western Conference Finals. Because I think this team can go through a minute. Go through, um, go through teams of the Clippers, the stature, because Kawhi's been injured. Go through the Mavericks, the, the Pelicans, all these other teams very easily. It's going to be those dogs, and we got to avoid them last year. That was one of the best things. You went, you get to the number one seed, this is what happens. You get to play lower seeds, right? We, our toughest test the whole run was obviously, and I'll still say this, was was the was the Phoenix Suns. Was the yep. Phoenix Suns the whole way. That was the only team that you tested, that tested you. Everybody else, you fucking dog walked. That's not going to be the case this year. So hopefully Jamal can get healthy and everybody else can get healthy and get you in a position where, like I said, playing at altitude, playing in front of your home fans, although Malone says he doesn't want it. I know the Brunton Nuggets wants to play home games, that play a majority of their games at home and, and have this home court behind them. And it absolutely will be a factor if you get that one seed or two seed at least. So now switching from a one seed and a two seed, does Houston, so they're technically the only team that is not eliminated from playoff no, contention. Everybody yeah. else in the Eastern Conference is already set. Houston's the only team there two, three and three games three. back. So Golden State has 11 and a half games back from the top spot. Houston has 14 and a half games. Can Houston make it into the play-in tournament, or are no, you already it, penciling in the war? It, it would take a miraculous meltdown. And I'm pretty sure Golden State has a tiebreaker over there, beating them three out of four times. So I, it would take a miraculous comeback. I, don't, I highly doubt, highly, highly, highly doubt that, that they'll be in. So more than likely, it will be Golden State and LA in that first uh, playing game. I, I, I don't think the Lakers will jump. I don't think, um, I don't think obviously Golden State will stay, but I think that will be a plan to get try to get into that eight seed and face either Timberwolves, Nuggets, or Thunder. Uh, over on the Eastern Conference, the teams that are already eliminated are totally done. So we have everyone that's going to be there. I think there's a little bit. The only the only thing that could change is that Chicago, we're going to have one playing game in Chicago or Atlanta, and the other one is going to be in Indiana. That's the only difference in anything that can happen. The Pacers, not the Pacers, the Hawks and the Bulls are both 36 and 40. So the fact that they're about to make the play-in tournament at like four to five games under 500 – the Eastern Conference in the NBA is garbage this year. Very top heavy, Jimmy. It is three teams, a load of crap, and then everybody else. And I would even do three teams plus a wild card because of someone who's been injured, who I've obviously slandered on this podcast quite a bit. Okay. Cleveland's been a very good team. Obviously, they get the shit kicked in by Phoenix to, on Wednesday night. Milwaukee and Boston are, are obviously title favorites. There's no doubt that, the, that those two are powerhouses. But. When you have when you have the Orlando fucking Magic as as hosting a playoff series against the Knicks, <laughs> I mean th that just tells you how how weak how weak the East is how how weak it is because Nico, the second it, seed is thirteen games back. 
Look, Boston versus Philly in the first round would be very, very funny. Is all I'm going to say. I would get a very, very good laugh at that because because if Philly is able to, to knock off Boston, great. That's fantastic for us. If we if for ta- fantastic for the Western Conference. But if 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 Boston beats Philly, it's another year of and be not making the, the conference finals. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Crazy, crazy how 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 those continue to go on. But I, look, I, the East the East Conference. If it's not represented, and I'll, and I'll cut it down to two teams. If it's not represented by Milwaukee or Boston, I will be very, very highly surprised. Is all I'm gonna say. If it's not represented by one of those two teams, I will be very, very surprised. Uh, anything else on the NBA before we move on? We're gonna we did the basketball at the front. We're gonna move into in NFL, and then we are gonna finish up with WrestleMania and talking about our teams that we well, coach. Anything well, else for the NBA? Well, well, the last thing is the Lord race. Jokic will have his third MVP in four years. It should be could be fourth MVP in well, Should be technically, but there's it's my look. The the sports books have it at minus two thousand. Shea's had a great year. He's not the best player in basketball. The, the best basketball player still resides in Denver, Colorado. Defensive player of the year, I already said Wemby has a great chance. Rookie of the year, I think Wemby has a chance. Uh, sixth man of the year, everything else I don't really expect. I'm, I, I expect Coach of the Year to probably go to Orlando. I forget who the heck. I think, it's, I think it might be um, bigger staff down there, or, or I forget where, who's down there. But they have they have the, the, the other awards, races, or eh, whatever, who cares. The MVP, obviously, will reside still here in Denver, and we will be hosting another MVP trophy over here. Jamal Mosley is the head coach for, uh, of Orlando. Former Denver Nuggets assistant. I knew he was a Denver Nuggets assistant. He, he coached us back in 2016, 2017. See? Stuff. Who says I can't produce and podcast on the fly? That was that was Jamie levels of, of getting that shit out there. I know that I don't show you guys, but that was quick. It was two, two keystrokes, and I was there. Jamal Mosley. I've never seen Jamal spelled that way, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, it's not and look good for Orlando. I'm happy for Orlando. That is basketball hell. Okay, there are there are, there are basketball hells in the world. It's Orlando and it's Washington. Okay, basically all you can hope for is doing dunks in the Mickey Mouse costume, doing like 360 or front flip dunks in a Mickey Mouse costume. I'm that's not, I'm, that's how you win right. in Orlando. I'm, I'm happy to see Orlando doing good. It's it's good to see some new blood. Do they have a chance at Easter Conference? No. <laughs> that's a, that's oh, a no. <laughs> one more thing that I wanted to talk about the NBA. Kevin Harlan might have had my new favorite like broadcasting call of all time. And I'm so I'm so like impressed because Kevin Harlan is the man, but also like pissed off that I didn't come up with this. Flight 50 cleared for takeoff. That's pretty good. That's pretty oh that was pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, I, I don't know about anybody else, but if you're a broadcasting nerd, that's if he did not write that down before the broadcast, I would I would just like, you know, take off the headphones and and let's Samuel just go away from here. Yeah, yeah. Like that was the smoothest line that I think I've ever heard as a broadcaster when you don't know what's going on. And then all of a sudden, Jokic is like tossing it behind his head and Eric Gordon's coming down, two hands foaming at the mouth, the dreads flowing out the back. Oh, flight 50 cleared for takeoff. Oh, you fucking. Ke- Ke- there's a reason why Kevin, Kevin is one of the goats, him and Mike Brain. I, could, I, I, I wish I was Kevin Harlan. Football, basketball, hockey. I think he could do the. He would do an incredible hockey game. There, look, Harlan, Doc Emmerich. That, that's that's the conversation right there. Those are the goats, in my opinion. I've, it's been Doc, I, by the way, I recommend Doc Emmerich's book if, if you're a broadcasting person out there. I recommend it to you too because you're a hockey fan. He has a, a million hockey stories that's and like great. starting in the Indiana like minor league programs and moving up. Um, it, it, it's incredible. But Kevin Harlan. I hate you, but I also love you. That was flight 50, flight fifty cleared for takeoff is probably the coldest line that will ever be. Besides Mike Breen's bang, and everybody says bang, but he does it in a, in a particular way. That that was like the coolest thing that I've ever heard an NBA announcer say. Uh, I wish I would have come up with that in, in, sitting in the gym. Let's talk about these new NFL rules, Nico. You you want me to explain the kickoff rules for everybody oh, first? Or I mean, do you, you want to I talk mean, about the can. kickoff? I, I already know what it is, but you, you can. You can explain to me. I, it was – here's the shitty thing. So I'm talking to Great Iron on Monday. We we skipped Sunday because it was Easter. Happy Easter, everybody, by the way, because we didn't – we haven't said that yet, and, and we didn't say it on the show leading into it. But on, on the show with Darren, I realized how convoluted – like I teach 12-year-olds. If you can't explain it in one to two sentences, you basically should just not do it. 
and that's that's how I feel about these NFL kickoff rules. So if you kick it out of the end zone, the opponent gets the ball at the thirty yard line. If you kick it and it's, I didn't, I didn't it, know that part. Yeah, no, it's it's now moved up. So if you kick it all the way through the back of the end zone, the ball gets put at the thirty yard line. If you kick it between the goal line and like the twenty five, that's the landing zone. You cannot, you no longer can fair catch it. You have to return it if you catch it in that zone. If it does not make it to, I think the opposing thirty, it goes out to the forty. It's the same penalty that you would normally get for kicking the ball out of bounds. Like I, they they saw in the Super Bowl that all the kickoffs, all thirteen kickoffs between both teams were kick touchbacks out of the end zone. They're like, fuck that noise. We want kickoff returns. So you guys are either going to kick the kickers are either going to put the ball in a spot where it's never going to be a touchback again. Now now instead of the big huge footed kickers, you want kind of a, a finesse guy, a guy that can put it high and outside the numbers and make it land at a certain yard line. You can tell him like, hey, three yard line. Six and a half, and he can do that. That's going to be the new trend in kickers. But there's why am I explaining four different scenarios and ten different outcomes, but based on the same four different scenarios? And, and you and you haven't even gotten to a point where they don't line up with a kicker anymore. Oh yeah, no, I haven't even mentioned that. Yeah, you can't you do an on, a surprise onside kick anymore because if you do an onside kick, then everybody's going to line up next to the kicker. But on a normal kickoff now, everybody's lining up. If you watch the XFL. Everybody lines up at like the 25 or 30, five yards apart from each other. It's basic, it, it's the same special teams drill that we used to do to be able to see if we could get on the fucking field in college and play special teams. Literally. That's the same it's drill that we're doing to start these NFL literally. games now. It's literally it. Look, rest of the look, but before I get into why I hate it and because I don't like it, rest in peace to the iconic, iconic Super Bowl kickoff photos. It's gone. Over. Never again. You will never see another uh, – all the whole team lining up, ball being kicked, all the flashing lights. It is now going to be a fucking minor league fucking kickoff that's going to look like it's a fucking joke. That is one of the most iconic photos every single year. Every single year, the ball being kicked off the Super Bowl and every single person lined up. And, and as the guys run, as the kicker's running up, he kicks it off. They see the – plan the whole stadium, all the lights going off. What are they going to fucking take a picture of now? <laughs> it's gone. You guys standing on gone. the line. Gone. Absolutely fucking gone. So there's my first thing. Second thing, Jimmy, I don't think you're aware, ready for this. We are going to see the reinvention of kick returns and, 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 and the importance of having a guy who is a Devin Hester-like person. Because I think this is going to produce the most amount of kick returns you have ever seen. I am dead serious. You have I think a specialist, is, by the way, is, in Marvin Mims. It is no longer, it is no longer outrun people. It is going to be coming a blocking scheme, Jimmy. I don't yeah. think you're ready for that. The offensive line. Oh, I'm, I'm here it. for it. It is Trust a blocking me. scheme that is going to be preparation to get these fuckers open. And then they're going to have to slower. create more rules. And they're going to have to create more rules. Because we are going to see the return of the fucking wall. If you play Little League football, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You form a fucking wall and have your motherfucker run behind it and he's gone. I'm serious. I'm serious. You are going to see it. it Offensive is. linemen are going to start becoming special team coordinators. Watch. I I would think it, I would guess it would take five preseason kickoffs for 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 our team to realize, holy fuck, we can just line up as a wall. This motherfucker only has the kicker to beat. That's literally it. That's literally it. Because there's no longer you can't. There's no longer a safety, right? In the past, there's one motherfucker. Because I used to be that dude, and I hated being it. There used to be a safety net of being like, well, if no one else tackles him, you're there, so the kicker doesn't have to do it. Kickers are going to have to be ready to start tackling. That's all I'm going to say. Because it, there's are we going to see a boom in American kickers? I, I'm telling you right now, Jimmy. I, I look I, when I heard when I heard this news. First of all, it killed me. Obviously, being a guy that played a lot of special teams, it's it's easier. You don't have to fucking run so far. But when you're running down the field, you at least get a fucking you at least get a fucking boost. When you're when you're when you're waiting there, sitting there, and you have to go right away after the the the, the, the receiver has a head start or the guy returning the ball has a head start, it's going to it's going to cause a lot of kick return touchdowns. I'm serious. And, and I think that's going to affect the draft. I think it's going to so affect a lot of things. It's going to, it's going to, it's, and, and, and 
like I said, I, I think it's going to hurt teams. It's going to hurt start hurting teams, and then people are going to be like, you know what? We're going to have to fu- our, our special teams coordinators <laughs> are going to start becoming more important. Being like, you know what? We can't just practice this fucking once a day, and and and, and have one drill where we where we do this. It's going to be sideline work where you have specialists. Kicking and blocking. I'm serious. There's going to be tight ends, fullbacks, possibly offensive linemen. I would even say out there on kickoffs now or kick returns now, preparing to block because it's going to be schemed like a fucking offense. I'm serious. I'm serious. For those of you who aren't prepared for it, be ready because, because like I said, Marvin Mims the world, which I'm happy that he'll finally get to fucking show. But all, if you have to beat two guys. Uh, uh, because you can't, you cannot run down at, at an angle and cut the guy off anymore. It is lined up across, and you catch the ball and you fucking go. That is going to add so many advantages. It really is, and I hate it. 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 I really don't. I really you don't, don't. watch UFL football. football. I wish. I wish they kept the fucking full speed rule with the with having the out of bounds thing be the the, the, the out of back of the yeah, end zone. That's all you had to do. Out of bounds, back of the back of the end zone, out of bounds. But Nico back Wedgebusters, back you, you and I would have no longer been of use on special teams because you and I were the two Wedgebusters. Because guess who had the least regard for their self awareness? It was the two of us. Two idiots with, with CTE recording the show right now. I'm going to run as fast as I can and hit the guy in front of me with my head, Coach Ken. And, I'm and going I to am, do that. And I am all for player safety. I am all for player safety. But all you're producing right now is is it, it, it's going to be – the it's no longer going to come down to – uh, 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 who, who's, who has the better defense? Who has the better offense? It's which team has a better fucking kick returner that, 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 that is, that is, that is causing the play. And look, it's only five yards, right? Kicking the ball to the end zone. Maybe, maybe teams will be like, fuck it. Who cares? It's five yards. It, like, we'll just let it go from there. We have trust in our defense. Maybe that causes that effect. But I, I still, I still really think that it's, it's going to, teams are going to start just conceding five to five yards. It really is. It's, it's going to get, it's going to take three games where you get, Fucking kick returned badly to to people be like yeah fuck it just give them five yards give them, give them, give them the ball at the thirty instead of the twenty five who cares who cares at this point it's going it's not solving I didn't anything. think about that that's a good it's point not, I, it's not that, solving that anything. is that it's is not a solving convention anything. of the rule I it's not honestly anything. I don't think any of these things have actually been voted into effect these are all just the proposals that have enough steam to get on the actual voting floor if you know anything about the NFL they love to treat themselves like a government entity. Like Roger Goodell sees himself as the president and, and the grand poobah of all things and, and everything like that. So I don't know if these are actually going to be fully put into effect. But if you need an idea of what the kickoff rules are going to look like, you can watch some UFL football. I put out the, the, the content on our account, like keeping my credibility as an NFL analyst slash kind of enjoying watching some UFL football because I miss it. I don't, I don't it's like that ex-girlfriend that you know isn't good for you, but you're like, hey, you look it's, really good. That, that, that's where we differ. That's why we're great at, at the show and, and great friends. Is like, I, I can't stand fucking UFO. I, I'm I, sure really, you can't. Because I, I You can watch not, G League basketball, and I think that shit is the most I know, vile I, thing that they've ever no. put on – on television, I don't watch G League basketball, Jimmy. I watch summer league basketball. It's way different. <laughs> way Same different. Thing. I think summer league basketball doesn't deserve. Right, summer league basketball doesn't be, deserve to be on ESPNU radio. Well, football let alone doesn't ESPN. Des- football doesn't deserve a prime time spot in the fucking spring, and I will die up that wall because there's other good sports on. Okay, the world doesn't revolve around sport. One sport. That's all I'll say. <laughs> this is why we work so well together. Um, and and we're going to continue to dis- to disagree because it happened today, and, and we can't just ignore it. Um, Stefan Diggs has found his third locker room to kill. The Grim Reaper strikes again, and I I, I know that I rely too heavily on his analysis, and and maybe it's flawed, or maybe I'm not seeing like the other side of his logic. But I love listening to Mark Schlereth because he tells it like I used to get told it. You know my dad. It, it was never like a sugarcoating thing. If you were messing up, you were messing up, and he was going to let you know about it. At some point, if you walk around and it always smells like shit, check your shoe. It might be you. I'm just saying. If Stefan Diggs can't get along with Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen, and that Minnesota roster to the point where he needs to get traded so badly, he winds up in Buffalo. And then he can't deal with Josh Allen and whatever else is going on in Buffalo that he wants out, and he's making a big deal about it. Now he winds up 
in Houston, I feel so bad for C.J. Stroud. I, I don't see this as a – it may be a good – listen, here's my caveat. It may be a good thing for this season to get you to the divisional round of the playoffs, the same place that you were just in because you, you ended up winning your wild card game. That's that's all you're going to do. Stephon Diggs does not take the Houston Texans to the Super Bowl for the shit that he's going to cost you in the locker room. Look, the, we, we the, the, I am going to argue with you and, and say that a receiver doesn't have that much pull. I don't think he does, and maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But I really think that there's a lot other a lot of other players in a locker room that have that much pull to fucking bring down. If a receiver is 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 the problem in your locker room, then you have other problems. Is all I'm gonna say. If he's the vocal leader, because the receiver doesn't get the ball every fucking play, the center touches the ball every play, the quarterback touches the ball every play, the middle linebacker calls the plays, the defensive edge, the edge rushers uh, uh, test the tempo, cornerbacks are are in charge of. I would say receiver is the most replaceable position in sports. I seriously, I I think I, I seriously think that, and 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 and, and it's and. You want to know why I think that is because look at who Patrick Mahomes is throwing the fucking ball to. <laughs> okay, uh, he's causing accidents throwing... on whatever highway is in Missouri. That's who Patrick Mahomes. Exactly, is. they're motherfuckers that are just pulled out of the fucking wind streets, and, and and who the fuck knows who the hell these guys are. But you know what? If you can, if you can hold on, if you can catch the physical football and not drop it and not be Kadarius Tony, you're gonna fucking succeed in Kansas City. Okay, plain and simple. Plain and simple. And, and, and with the receiver position being so replaceable, like running backs nowadays, and 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 that's what people are realizing. They're very, very replaceable. And if you have a good one, that's great. But you look at the championship teams in the past, right? What 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 are, what do these teams have in common, right? The Chiefs have not really had a number one since Terry Kill. Cooper Cup was a great player, great player, but that team that team. Obviously, it was built off their defense. You look at the Buccaneers. Mike Evans, very, very good, but he's no one put him as a top five receiver in the game. He's a top 10, maybe, maybe top 15, but he's not in the top five conversations. And Tom Brady leading it. You have to have a leader as a quarterback. And with with Houston and with Stephon Diggs, this is this does not hurt CJ Stroud by any means. In my is opinion, Stephon going to listen to CJ Shroud? I, I have not it's, listened it's to not Stephon. It's not necessarily Diggs. that. Jimmy, look at what this team added to a team that won a playoff game last year, right? Look at what this team added. They added your boy, Joe Mixon, to this roster. They added Stephon I'm Diggs to this roster. That. That, that's look, still an open game I'm that just saying, they, look, a team that won a playoff game last year is realizing what the Chiefs are trying to do, what you try to do, what what the, what the what the Chiefs what the Chiefs did, and what other teams are trying to replicate is that when your quarterback's on a rookie fucking deal, go get talent around him and see what happens. Because Stephon Diggs has never been in that locker room. Diggs may change. Obviously, he's ruined the last couple, but Diggs may change. He's stepping into a brand new locker room where he doesn't know a fucking soul. You have a rookie. You have a good young up and coming quarterback on a rookie deal. And the Texans are going all in on off of what off of what uh, uh off of what D'Amico Ryan's is coaching. And like I said, D'Amico Ryan's is a fucking player's coach. You look at what Minnesota had with Stefanski, or not Stefanski, who O'Connell, and you or oh. whoever I don't even know who the head coach was there when Minnesota oh, was there. It, it, it was O'Connell and Zimmer. So those Zimmer, those Zimmer, not a fucking leader. You look at fucking uh, uh the guy who makes 9-11 jokes as a fucking hobby and 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 McDermott in Buffalo, not a fucking player's coach. D'Amico Ryan's is the player's coach. He is CJ Stroud better than Josh Allen? He's not. He's not better than him. But right now, the talent... Then why the outlaw- fuck were you complaining to the point that you were going to get shipped somewhere else? Because the Bills are not fucking beating anybody. And, and the Bills... I bet, the you Bills- they beat the, I bet you they beat the Texans this year. Okay, we'll see. We'll see then. We'll see. Then we're right going to have to put something right now, on that because... Right now, because right now, James Cook is the number one fucking option in Buffalo. They better hope they were, they draft somebody because this is Aaron Rodgers and, and Green Bay all over again. This is Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay all over again. Where they were, where Josh Allen's talent better hope that he he can fucking create some weapons out of him. He's Gabe Davis, if you didn't know, was also in Jacksonville. So number one yeah. and number two are both gone. You're running game with James Cook. You've already told yourself that you don't like fucking running the ball. No, your you're defense, running back is Josh your defense, Allen. Your defense is also lost. Poyer and Micah Hyde, or Micah Hyde's back and Poyer's gone. You're losing yeah. pieces. I would love to see. I will take that better. Okay, than the next so I, yeah, okay. Buffalo will Stop not be. 
Yeah. Top to bottom, right now, Texans are a better football team than the fucking Buffalo I'll, Bills. I'll let you take that job because Allen I... Is a better quarterback than CJ Stroud. There's zero denying that. I will not deny that. I think Josh Allen is top three quarterback in the NFL. But that team, top to bottom, defensively top and three. offensively, is not better than the Houston Texans right now. Top three is another conversation that we need to have deeper into the summer because we'll, we'll rank quarterbacks, but I don't see Josh Allen as top three. Top five-ish. Um, I won't give you the... I'll I'll keep with the Bills because I said that and I, and I won't go back on my word. I'm I'm that kind of that kind of Italian. I'm that kind of a dago that it, I said something. So yes, if the Bills win, then I'll celebrate. If the Bills lose to the Texans, if they ever end up playing them, sure. I don't think the Texans are going to get further than they did last year. No, they probably. This won. is this is AFC. not a. It's does yeah. This is a, this is a flashy move because everybody knows Stephon Diggs because of the Minnesota miracle. That's what they know him from. And that stupid-ass viral picture of him waiting and watching the, the Kansas City Chiefs get the AFC Championship trophy. Those are the two reasons that people know Stephon Diggs. Yes, he's been – he produces – it's not like he's not a terrible receiver. Like, he's a good guy. Like, I want to have him on the team. Top five statistic receiver the last five years, still. But it goes back to that sports psychology thing. Like, if you bring in a guy that's going to complain when you have Josh Allen as the quarterback – and you have this defense with – I know that they were banged up last year, but still, like, if you're going to have a guy that complains in the best of situations, what are they going to do when you you find adversity? You well, were I, a – you you should not have won your division last year, and you were lucky to get in the playoffs if I'm the Houston Texans. Adding this volatile of a piece into your locker room right now with a second-year head coach and a second-year quarterback – and by the way, the first, the, the number one wide receiver is Nico Collins, who is a second year player. Stephon Diggs may have more influence than I think we're giving him credit for. Look, I we, we can argue up a wall here. I don't think receiver has that much pull. And it's not a set. Hey, look, you could say that D'Amico Ryan is a second year head coach. D'Amico Ryan has led a locker room for 15 years. True. He's led a I'll defense. Give you, I will give he's you leading, that. I will he's give led you a that. defense for, for 15 years. He's led a team for two coach for two years he has led been a leader on in a fucking locker room for 15 years ever since he stepped into houston 10 years ago whatever it was when he when he first came to the league he has been the locker room leader plain and simple so there is zero doubt about locker room leadership and where that goes to in my opinion okay and the fact look like i said he's coming into a new locker room buffalo is going to realize quickly you're going to find out if you are able to replicate what fucking patrick mahomes is doing very quickly and you're and we are going to find out if the because look there are two ways to look at this it is the bills trying to do what patrick mahomes did and saying we don't need a fucking number one receiver let's just go get a bunch of random nobodies and hope that Josh Allen can do it, or you have the Bengals' way of doing things, and you have them holding on to T. Higgins and lock him up in a fucking jail cell and say, "No, we're not fucking training you, and we're going to keep two receivers." So there's two ways of looking at it. And if you, and like I said, both teams, both teams don't have have quarterbacks that are top level. Burrow and Josh Allen are, like I said, two of the top five quarterbacks in the league. C.J. Stroud was. Very, very good last year. And the only reason why I'll agree with you that this may not take them any farther is because they still have to fucking play the Chiefs. <laughs> okay? And That's the, the fucking and, it's, and the it's Darth fucking Vader over there, okay? It's Darth fucking Vader. That's all I'm gonna say. All you want to say about the Bengals, there's one team that runs the AFC. There's one team that runs Who's the, the AFC. Who's the only quarterback who's beaten them? Exactly, and there's only been one quarter, and there's been only one uh, uh, team in the AFC that's won a Super Bowl uh, other than the Chiefs in five years. Okay, so there's there's one Darth Vader. Okay, there's one Darth Vader. They will win this division very easily. Jacksonville's a fucking who the fuck knows? They they brought in Mac Jones as their big off season signing. Okay, who knows what they're going to do? He's a backup. Indianapolis, and he's a backup. Indianapolis is is we'll see what Anthony Richardson is. He could be very good. Who knows? And then you have the Titans, who <laughs> who's running Will Levis out there. Who they had some pretty good offseason additions. I won't deny on it, but they're losing their locker room leader and Derrick Henry. Okay, so that's a lot yeah. different. When you play in, in in the AFC with the powerhouses they are, and you are as young as the Texans are, it's going to be difficult. But when you have CJ Stroud on the rookie contract for two more years, which is a four year deal or three year four year deal, whatever it is, you can have four to take these fucking chances to bring in a number one receiver. Because it takes the fucking weight off of Nico Collins, who was your number one last year. It takes the weight off Tank Dell, hopefully with him returning. It takes the weight off your number one running back and Joe Mixon. It takes the weight off of these guys' shoulders. Yeah, he's fucking hurt every locker room he has. But like I said, he's walking into a locker room where 
It's it's a bunch of young fucking hungry motherfuckers. Buffalo got fucking sick and tired of his shit. And all these dudes in, in Houston now, it's a brand new thing. It's a brand new thing. And maybe he can show a few things of how you need to play in the NFL. And maybe it'll be bad. Maybe it'll be good. But like I said, I, I look at it as the, the Texans got a number one receiver and got another weapon for CJ Stroud. That's another weapon that, 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 that he didn't have last year. What made Joe Burrow so fucking effective the second year, his second year? Jamar fucking Chase. What made Patrick Mahomes so fucking successful? Travis fucking Kelsey. You give young quarterbacks number one talent. I don't care if he's locked in fucking cancer. You give them a number one receiver that they can rely on, they can succeed. And that's what Houston is hoping for and hoping and hoping to go forward. It's honestly, I, I enjoy the times that we go at each other because I can see your side and, and, and I think that I'm, you know, there's there's points in, in both arguments and, and it'll be interesting to see what this young team does. Uh, I I have said enough and, and like I said, I don't go back on what I say on this show. I'm more than willing to be called out by freezing cold takes and, and everything like that. You're talking to the guy. Who said Jared Bednar and Joe Sackett should be fired the year before the, the Avalanche won the Stanley Cup? That's who I am. So the thing that I know, I'm just here for your entertainment. I, that's all I'm here for. And I know how to produce the podcast. Those are the two good qualities that I have. Um, let's talk about something that it, you and I and wrestling, and, and it's always been, it, it's like a common thread. My dad and I used to – we had a deal because Monday Night Football and Monday Night Raw, before they moved to a three-hour show, used to start at the same time. Commercial breaks, we go back to the other one, see if they're on. If they're on, we're watching it. Fridays were Friday Night SmackDown before they moved to Thursdays in the pre-tape show. Professional wrestling – my mom used to – my mom and my grandpa – My I don't – I've – not trying to get anything else out there, but I never met my grandpa, but my mom always says that he used to love WWF and like superstar Billy Graham, Hulk Hogan, and all those kind of things. Professional wrestling has been in my family for, for generations. And finally, The Rock has come back to WrestleMania. I, I, I love it. It's been a perfect... I it, it's a perfect storyline, and I know what's going to happen, Nico. I know what's going to happen. But do I don't you? give a shit. I, 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 I do. I do. I, do. Here's, do I, I said the same thing last year. Do you? I said the same I, I do. I said, I, I said the exact same thing last year. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But here's the thing. The way that they're letting The Rock have just like full the, – The Rock has never been more of a heel. It, it, this is the most Hulk despicable – the only time, but it's been a No, very, but very I think time. this guy is worse it's because at worse, least but... Hollywood Rock wasn't violent. Yeah. This guy's made Cody Rhodes bleed two times out of the last week and like whipping him with a belt. And he's posting like he's, he, I, I, social media was the worst and the best thing that happened to professional wrestling because it also exposed all of the dirty secrets. And everybody now knows that it's all, <laughs> I, I had some kid try and like, cause he said he watches WWE. And I said, well, I think they're going to have the rock win. They're like, going to have him win. I was like, bitch, do not. You don't believe in the Easter Bunny. You do not believe that John Cena is still a 15-time world champion. That was written. Okay? That was written. And and I think that the way that things were written, so the way that Monday Night Raw ended was The Rock and his cousin, who I did not know was the, is the youngest bro, younger brother to Umaga. So it's it's a, it's it's a whole fucking tree. It's I saw the tree. I watched. And the, yes, because you have the Cody Rhodes I, I, I on, the other, on the other on the other end. Let me, let me chime in for a second. I have I love wrestling too, and and I'll be honest with you. I started watching wrestling around probably the shittiest times when when when, when there was no competition. There was zero competition, right? It was fucking TNA and 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 Bring of Honor, and that's it. No, who gave a fuck about that? That was the early 2010s into the 2020 uh, until college 2016s. Okay, but CM Punk, John Cena. Uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler, The Miz, all those guys were running shop, and the Randy Orton running shop. That's how. That's how I watched it. This is the best wrestling I've ever seen. This is the best. This is the best era of wrestling I've physically watched. I did not physically watch the Attitude Era. I did not physically watch all those because I'm this, that young. This may be better. It's the this, social, it, the it, uncensored it, it, it social media after, promos that The Rock has been putting out. It there. arguably is better because, like I said, you ha you're adding those aspects of of the quote unquote PG era and you're adding those aspects of the attitude era. And as Cody, cause I've been watching the interviews today and he went on the MMA hour with the today and he, he brought up 
this is the Renaissance era where it's a new fucking blood. It's a new, new regime. And, and, and what this, 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 this wrestling is, like I said, you have name redacted gone, gone. That name, the, 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 the redacted name, there's no touches. There's not a single fucking McMahon in WWE right now. Stephanie is, is, is taking care of her family. Vince obviously has everything that's been going on with him. Shane is not there. Obviously, uh, a senior passed away. Linda is not there. There is there. This is the first WrestleMania without a McMahon fucking in the picture. And that is great for the sport. Because of everything that has come out, and obviously I'll say sport, but entertainment business. It's great for the entertainment business because it is a new, fresh product. It is a new, it's fresh so product. It, 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 so it is so and, – and I hate using his fucking saying, but he said this. In the Fire Fire Fun House, it's such good shit. Such good shit. It, it, is, it is a new – and like I said, look, I don't go on, I go about flaunting that I fucking watch wrestling. I really don't, it's, okay? It's I, a I private really thing. This it's is a, a very, very pleasure. private thing. If I'm talking to a girl, it's not something I bring up until probably the hey, first third fucking month. I'm a day, big okay? WWE fan. I love John Cena and his George. That's it not is, a message that I send. It is not something I bring up, okay? But – Absolutely. After I get comfortable with someone's like, yeah, I like enjoy watching it. It was like, why do you enjoy watching it? Well, it's fucking reality TV. It's literally, it's, re it's literally reality Tried TV and true. to me. It's literally reality TV to me, and that's the best part. It, it is Cirque du Soleil uh, uh, mixed with reality TV. Is what it is. Okay, and yeah. what what wrestling has become with the competition of AEW and with guys like Cody Rhodes, who who was a son of a plumber and and and, and it's son, oh, son of a son of a plumber and. I built themselves off of legacies and everything, and you have the biggest, one of the most, one of the most well-known people in the world, one of the most well-known people in the world, and that's and that and the Rock come back to his roots. It it, it it puts everything up to another magnitude. It really does. It really does because the Rock before he was a fucking football player, or I mean, after he was a football player, but but before he before he was started, a movie star, before he was a movie star, before he was the the biggest man in Hollywood, because he because look. You walk on the street, you show a picture of the rock to somebody, 95% of them know who this motherfucker is. And and and, and Cody said this perfectly on the Hawaiian show today. What the rock has shown is that he he is a wrestler. He is a wrestler first. He is a wrestler to the perfect amount. Like he that, is a wrestler. Like I've, I've been saying the social media stuff is is probably the best I've ever seen. Wrestling is his core. Wrestling is his core, and and to have someone with the with the with the pull with the with the uh, with the, with the viewership that The Rock has promoting something like this all over again, and, and and like I said, he's not the main attraction. He is the he is part of the main attraction, but but people are coming to see The Rock be a part of something bigger, right? He isn't the main event of the biggest rest, biggest main event of WrestleMania. Or see, he, he he's the second. He's the second one. He's the first day. He's not the second main event. He's the first main event. And that brings in the pull because having this outside viewership is what brought people in. And, and, and look, I'm not even going to lie to you. I fucking looked up tickets because because my mom works the, for the fucking airlines. And I'm like, you know what? I can I can do I can fly standby to Philly and, and maybe I could go to Sunday night because I have a game on Saturday coaching. Like I've considered it because I paid more for a fucking Stanley Cup. Final ticket. Tickets right now, if I want to bring binoculars and, 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 and bring some tissues up there to, to, to wipe my nose off, will be our 150. <laughs> okay? <laughs> like, 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 like it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be you and a whole bunch of other guys. Speak. I, honestly, that might be your scene because it's a, you and a whole bunch of German speaking people like, and you're like, it, it's, it, 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 would be, it would be fucking something to behold because that's how much. Wait, this has and like I said, I it's 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 great to see that that and I like I said I love Triple H. Triple H is one of my favorite characters in all of wrestling. He's one of my he favorite has it people. so down. He, he him and Nick Khan, who I've talked about previously on the show, and the way he's built WrestleMania and built this company, bringing CM Punk back, bringing being the reason Cody Rhodes considered coming to WWE again, and being the reason for all for all this new former talent coming back and having a new fresh outlook has been so important. So important because you look at the, the Vince McMahon era and look, this the WrestleMania is not what it is without without Vince McMahon, without redacted name. But this, it's time, and forty years later, we finally have a new Renaissance era where where it's 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 fun, it's fun to watch, it's fun, it's cool to be like, holy shit, like 
fucking raise my finger, tribal chief. I acknowledge you. It's fucking as weird as that fucking sounds. Like it, it, it's it's cool to do that again and and watch it and be part of it. The I I guess I don't know if any of the other superstars have this amount of sway in the company, but the like I said, the uncensored promos, the video of him whipping the belt and like rubbing the blood, it, it just. <laughs> that's why it used to be as popular as it was when before cave fabe was broken and before people realized that they were playing characters when you would go to the sportatorium in dallas if you were the heel you were getting spat on as you were walking to the uh, to the ring and everybody loves the rock and i know that he's doing this just to promote, to, to promote another movie and everybody's going to go see his movie and he's going to continue his box office success of a hundred million dollars no matter what he does it, he had the, the song on Saturday Night Live the last time that he, he hosted Franchise Viagra. He is, and he's proving that again with the WWE. But the fact, like, the violence, the story, he's such a better actor. I know that he was a heel before, but now that he knows how to act, I can hate him, but love him at the same time. I know that he's going to lose Saturday in that tag team match because there's no, See, there's no way that they're... We can do predictions throughout the card because I have an interesting thought, but I think he, I think he wins. To be honest with you, I think he. So wins. the because because they're in the tag match to see whether or not the bloodline is allowed at ringside, and we all know what happened when the bloodline was it quote. I'm saying this with as many air quotes as I can because I was so pissed off when the bloodline is not allowed. The bloodline will still intervene. I. That's all. That's all I can. Say. I think is look. look I'll, I'll, we'll just go right into predictions. I think they win. I think they win. I think the Rock and Roman Reigns win, so that it sets up that Cody, Cody, Cody wins on Sunday. Cody wins on Sunday is the absolutely massive underdog because look, this is this is fantasy booking. This is this is me playing WWE 2K24 on my fucking PlayStation booking. It is it is the bloodline kicking the shit out of Cody, and it is the glass shattering. You're having the Daniel Bryan moment. No, no, oh my no, God. no, no, you know, but it's a glass shattering music hitting. It's it's the, the da, 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 coming in, and all of the f- foes of the Rock walking into the ring, and and building the next great, the next great John Cena, the next great Steve Austin, the next great face of the of the company of the world of wrestling. And Cody, and, and you have that music hitting and coming down to saving Cody Rhodes. I, look, the rumors have been swirling because because. Steve Austin had a had a video on his ranch with a, with a, with an Easter at basket full of beer from an unknown source. Is all I'm gonna say. John Cena has had a couple of interviews saying that he loves Cody Rhodes and that he 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 really appreciates him being a mentor, being the face of the company. All I'm gonna say is I want I want that I want that I want that uh, that I want that unforgettable WrestleMania moment because the unforgettable WrestleMania moment is is the Rock and and the, that family beating up on Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins and anyone else trying to help him and then that music hitting and then and then you have the rest, you have the Attitude Era and all the greats of the past going against one another bringing an end to that and bringing in the new with Cody Rhodes on top of the world and winning the championship and I think that's how it ends I hope so but I think that's how it ends. That's cool, Jimmy. That's, that's such good shit, isn't it? I, I think about it. Nigo, I'm gonna watch shit. just for looking for that now. I'm gonna watch Saturday. Jimmy, I, 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 I love Saturday. the dirt sheets. I love the dirt sheets. I I I I I, I used I, to I, I used to be on the same YouTube channels as you where they would do the fantasy bookings, and I I was convinced for the longest time that John Cena was the perfect person to end the Undertaker streak because they're like, How can you turn John Cena, the mega face of the company for the last 20 years, heel, make him beat the Undertaker? Yeah. But no, they let they left that for Brock, and I get why they did that. Another thing that I I thought of as we were talking about this, did you watch Roadhouse? No, I know I you have not. Amazon Prime. I, I I do not know. I I I know. I get it. I get the whole like it is. It's so cheesy. Post Malone is in the in the first fight of the movie, and you can tell that most of the fights are like CGI. Who gives it? It's it's entertaining. The first Roadhouse movie, Joe Rogan has done like four or five different podcasts about it. It's the most like weirdly homoerotic movie. It's weird. It's like a total guy flick. Who else was going to write that you're going to defeat the main villain by ripping his throat out? And then the the other guy gets toppled by a a giant grizzly bear statue. This movie is not meant to be realistic. Do I think that any UFC fighter can walk into any bar and be the most perfect bouncer of all time? Yes, I do. But do I think that he's going to be able to get hit by a truck? And then also fight off prime 
Conor McGregor is the shittiest actor that I've ever seen, but he's the most charismatic person that I've ever seen on camera. I think most of his lines are like, ha ha, or there's, there's no dialogue whatsoever with any of this. It's the yeah. coolest fucking ending fight scene that I've ever seen in a movie in the last 15 years. No, it, 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 look, I, I funny, fun fact, like that, that cage scene where he, he needs the guy in the head live. I watched that live. I, wa I, wa I watched that live at UFC. I have the poster somewhere. UFC two. That was the one with McGregor and Cerrone, no, wasn't it? No, it was. It was. It was Jones versus Gane. John Jones's fight. I was okay. in Vegas and I decided, "Fuck you, yeah, I'm gonna go buy a ticket." And I went and and, and I and I saw. And right before the the um, main card went on, that was the initial, just like fun little thing they had on. And that's how they filmed it. They filmed his walkout. Filmed everything. I was. I was third level. Can't see me in any of that, but I was third level. I was up there looking at it. So, uh, and and it look. I, I don't know if I'm gonna watch it. I'm a little worried that that Connor is just fucking too too much to handle. And just and just focus on the fight scenes because nobody yeah. else can stand up to the Dalton that they created in the movie except for a psychotic Connor. Uh, all I will say is I saw the highlight of him in the UFC scene. That referee has got to be the worst referee ever fucking known to mankind. If, if you fucking let a motherfucker do that, all, all I'm going to say is you are Steve Mazzagatti level of fucking shame. And if oh, you don't it gets know, so ridiculous. If you, don't, if you don't know who Steve Mazzagatti is, look up Steve, search up Steve Mazzagatti Dana White YouTube video, and you will see the absolute blasphemy that, that, this, that, that this guy was doing, okay? It's so ridiculous. And and like I said, Jake Gyllenhaal, before the last fight scene, gets literally ran over by a truck. And somehow, I'm not going to give away how, but he still finds out a way to win the fight. He's the only person that can stand up to this wild ass. It sounds, it sounds, he, he kills it sounds the, like what, what we think is the main bad guy. He kills him with a single punch to the throat. He's like, and, and then he explains it. I just crushed your tracheal bone. Blood's rushing to your brain, but you're going to be able to hear this next like 25 second speech that I'm going to give. I hate it when people push. I it takes a lot for me to be angry, but I'm pretty angry now. Like, Jimmy, I, I saw you break a guy's leg in the first 15 minutes of the movie. You, you you're very quick to anger. It it, it takes a lot from it, it sound and it sounds like fucking a bad Rocky is all I'm going to say. I didn't watch the first Roadhouse. I have not. And, and I do not compare this movie to Rocky. Rocky. I is said a great bad. Dramatic. I said it's no, the story. Yes, it's, it's the story totally, sounds it's, like a bad Rocky. It's all, it's a story. That's I. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. No. I'm it, and, I'm saying it, it sounds like a horrible fucking knockoff to try to think what a Rocky story would be in today's age. That's what I'm just sounds like from what I've seen. And what I've heard. And it takes place in Florida. So that's the only way that they can get away with like they he, he kills people before the final fight scene in this one. He he has like a body count as, as well. I will tell you right now, do not go into this thinking that you're gonna see. Have you ever watched a John Clown Van Damme movie? Like, have you seen Bloodsport? You don't watch that movie for the acting. You watch that movie for the fisticuffs, and you watch it for like the gratuitous chick scene and, and like the hot girl that he ends up getting with by, by the end of the movie. That's all. This is a purebred 80s action flick that was released in 2024. There's a reason this movie is not in theaters. I That's all I'm going to say. Do not expect Marlon Brando level acting from Conor McGregor or Jake Gyllenhaal. And Jake Gyllenhaal has been in some good, like he, he's proven that he can act. This is not one of those movies. This movie is there. Like guys bring your girlfriends because Jake Gyllenhaal has 14 different abs in this movie. And, and, you know, she's going to get all excited and, and you're going to be able to, to capitalize on that. And you get to watch the most brutal, violent, every picture, like, and it's CGI. So you, you can kind of dissociate from reality. Uh, it, it's good. It, it's good. That's all I'll I'm going to say. You, it's a good, bad 80s action movie. I'll take your word. But, man, I, like I said, what I've heard does not sound like it'd be the most entertaining thing. People were expecting yeah. Conor McGregor to walk in and be like uh, uh, LL Cool J in, in any given Sunday or something like that. No, he dude can't act. It, it's all from the heart. And if he doesn't have anything in his heart, he just looks intimidating. That, that's all. Uh, let's let's talk about a little bit of coaching because you finally got back out there. And, and I've been – obviously, I'm still coaching wrestling. I, like I said at the beginning of the show, I'm coming directly from a wrestling practice. Uh, what are – some things that you use from our experience, and I, you've had different coaches than I had because you played other sports in the off seasons. But we have the same football coach. Do you find yourself as like that hard ass, like you know, or or are you a little bit more 
you know, I'll, I'll say the Monty Williams, the the guy that'll maybe take you to the side. Hey, that sucked. That's one of the worst plays that I've ever seen. But this is why, and let's not do this again. What have you seen your coaching style be? Uh, oh, I, I think the, what I've what I've realized, and I've coached basketball before as well, is like I try to incorporate as many sports as possible into one into how I coach. I, I try to try to relate to how you need to position yourself. I try to relate how you uh, move your body, how you do all these different things um, to, to try to relate to it, try to relate to it. Cause like I said, I think at young ages, when you're, when you're coaching these kids, I think it's important to emphasize playing more than one sport. That's, it's so, so important. It, it, it takes a lot of lessons. It's a, everything you do. And I, I, what I've realized is I'm, I, I am, I, the more the more I get older, the more I see the importance of building good character. That's that's the most important thing to me. And and I've told our, my kids this, is that, look, I want to win every game. You want to win every game. There's zero doubt about that. But when you're a fourth grader and when, when you're this young of age, the most important thing is playing for your teammates, respecting your opponents, respecting your coaches and referees. Because the last thing I need is is, is hearing how, how one use outlandishly talk bad about somebody or or cuss out another player that is not what i want to see on the field for my team that is the last thing to do. i will yank you off the field and i will not have you play another another, snap, another not snap but second of the game playing simple you need to respect those aspects of the game because at a fourth grade level you teach these things you teach your respect and you and you and you try to get these things in their head where if, you, if you're able to do things the right way if, you, if you're able to um be, if, if you trust the coaching staff and trust my and, and trust myself and and, ha, and and that we're gonna put you in the right places, win or loss, we're we're gonna you're gonna learn more about what we do as a team than 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 what our win loss record was. Yeah, I've thought about our fifteen to zero loss that we had last weekend more times than I fucking count. But I'm more thinking of like how can I get these kids in a bit better position to to win and, and and to be successful. I don't know if we're gonna win any games or how many games we're gonna win or I don't know what scores will be going going forward. But what I did tell them after the game was like I promise you that we're gonna be we're gonna compete and that we're gonna to be do it the right way. We're gonna be respectful of others and and at that young of age and obviously different you have different perspective coaching high school and how these kids want to get there when you're coaching at a young age and and and. Coaching a bunch of kids that are brand new to the sport, that's the most important thing. Teaching fundamentals, teaching how the right way to play the game. Because like I said, the game of the cross and how I coach it, the game of the cross specifically, it's a creator's game, right? There's so much respect that goes into how you te- how you treat your stick, how you teach your opponents, how you treat the goalies and that, how you treat the ball and everything, how you treat everything around you. It goes so much into the game and the respect and the respect part of the game that, that, I, that myself and my coaching staff – is, is, is very, very prevalent on being like you, you walk on the field, you respect everything that, that about the field, about the game and how you play. And and like I said, if I was coaching football, if I was coaching basketball, that may be different. If I was coaching a different level, it's obviously going to, be, going to be much different. But at that young level, it's very, very important to teach those, teach those and get those installed into their head as they go forward with the game across, football, basketball, whatever it may be. This is part of the reason why I wanted to bring this up because you coaching as much lacrosse as you are, lacrosse was your third sport growing up. I, I know that you loved it and everything, but that was like the the tertiary, the one that you played in the off season in between the other ones. Wrestling was that for me. I was more of a baseball player and a football player. It eventually became wrestling as my second sport. Um, it, it's crazy because we do have a lot of the similar. I've told the story on on the show, and it's been this show. It's been talking the gridiron, on whatever show that I've been on. The kids on the wrestling team tell me, oh, you're my favorite coach to have in the corner when you lose. And I'm like, ah, that's that's good bad. and bad. I don't want to hear that. But then what, what you were just saying, it brought me back. I know you've seen it, but like Gridiron Gang and the, the speech that The Rock, speaking of The Rock again, he gives the team, because obviously in that movie, he's teaching a team of convicts. They're only going to be together for a season. So like, it's very important. Build a character, try and figure out who these people are. And at the end of the first game where they get beat 35 to zero, I do not believe that this team is 35 points better than you. I would not trade you for them. I would not rather give up my position with this team and having to figure out how we're going to not get beat like we just did and move forward. Like that's, it's part of, I think it's part of what drew you and I into the sports that we played because uh, obviously like, you know, you were, you felt like you were more talented than basketball and, and you had, 
a football scholarship at some point. I was felt like I was more talented in baseball and I got a football scholarship to, to play in college. You don't think that you're as talented in that sport, but that sport teaches you the most about like how to just deal with everything that you're going to go through in life. That That's the real thing. Like, yes, I, I see the same things. Like when you go out, shake your it, wrestling is different. You get, you shake your opponent's hand before every match. You shake your opponent's hand at the end of every match, whether he beats you 15, zero, whether he pins you in 20 seconds, whether you beat him by a point or you pin him, you shake hands, you go shake the other coach's hand. That's how things work. And, and there's the video of DC pushing his wrestler after he had a bad loss. Like, nope, you are talking, you're shaking the other coach's hand. You're showing him their respect. Like we are learning this lesson at a very young age. You lose and you win in a very similar fashion. And I think, I think that much different. To be honest with you, I think we've lost that a lot. I think I think with with people seeing the shit talking of professionals and she the shit talking of, of of higher level athletes and all that things, I think that, that that's really been lost. And it's like it's it's important. So look, when you're when you're in between lines, yeah, I want to beat the hell out of you. Yeah, I want to be better than you. Absolutely. But 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 being a shithead and being a dickhead outside of things, it, it, there's no place for that. There's zero place for that in this world. And when you get older, because like I said, clock ticks faster than we all would like. And and, and when you look, when you're done playing, the lessons you learned of, of being being a good teammate, being there for others, is going to carry you into your working job. It's going to carry you into into, into your relationships with with a significant other, with your family, if you decide to have one. Like it will carry all that into you. No one's going to fucking remember getting your ass fifteen to zero. Me as a coach, I might because I'm going to think about it for the next fucking week. Be like fuck, I really don't want to do that again. You couldn't stop a beach ball. Just, you couldn't just, stop a beach ball. That's, that's just the competitor in me. But like I said, when installing that into the, into into the younger generation and, and and coaching those type of things, I think it's very very important to to, to harp on that because the last thing I want I want to see is be that other team that was kicking our ass by fifteen and yelling at a referee that a goal should have counted when your kid had a foot in the crease when you're up by fifteen. I do. Ne I will never be that coach. I will never be that coach. I will never be the guy that's trying to run up the score and be an asshole. If my team is on the winning end of things, we will play respectfully. We will. We will play hard. We will play to the end, hard to the end. But we. I am not going to be an asshole, and I will. And I will respect everyone else, and I expect my team to do that. This is why the show works so well because we're able to just do so much, and we have a lot of the same feelings. So. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed. I, I think that's everything that we have to touch on. I, we're not talking about the NHL until the Avalanche figure out whatever the hell is going on with them. So, yes, we left that out, but that was intentional. A lot of basketball talk. We talked a little football and a lot of mindset and, like, coaching and, and everything like that. And if you're a wrestling fan, you stick with us. I know that it's only, like, SummerSlam and WrestleMania. I'm watching. I'm uh, I follow WWE. Watching. I follow AEW. I'm, I'm, I follow I'm watching old WrestleManias. I've, I've went through the last – 15 the past two weeks. I'm on last year's WrestleMania for the next two days until I get to, to WrestleMania Saturday, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm obviously paying attention. I ain't no we're, Mark. We're, I ain't no, no Mark. We ain't no, no Mark no. over here. This is, no this is legitimate love. I've loved it for as long as I can remember. Uh, this is a great episode. Hopefully everybody enjoyed. Be sure to follow at FEOTV pod, at Variety underscore sports underscore. Subscribe to all the YouTube channels. Check out the show. Tell your friend to check out the show. Leave a five-star rating and a review. We got a couple of new reviews, so we'll be gathering those. If you want to leave one, we'll shout you guys out on the next couple episodes coming up. Ton of bonus content. We did interviews, so the voice that you hear at the beginning and the end of the podcast, Warren Garrett, he did release a new song. Everybody should go check out Let Me Go. It's on all platforms. He is releasing another new song coming up in, I think, a week. So we may have another thing coming up with him, but we have a ton of bonus content, all of that great stuff. Follow, subscribe, like, comment, tell your friends. That's what helps us out the most. But 177 episodes down, Nico, and this was a. I, I had a blast that throughout. Like I, I don't know basketball all that much, but we have, you know, we have differing opinions. We have the same opinions. This is what people come to the show for. We're we're not in the know necessarily because we're not on the sidelines, but we can put a, put our own stuff out there and, and we know what we're talking about. So that was. I had a blast, and, and I hope Absolutely. everybody enjoyed it's this. Fun, one. It's fun to get variety. It's fun to get variety. And no, no, uh, shout out, free shout out, Variety Sports Network. But we like to keep a variety over here and, and be able to get a uh, talk about five different sporting things or type of type of things in one episode, and 
an hour or two hour show, I think is very, very important because obviously we went through the whole fall where 95% of the show is football. So it's fun yeah. to talk about everything. Yeah. Now we, we are well-rounded. That's what I would like everybody to know. Episode 177, Far Into the Bench podcast for myself, Jimmy Pilato, my co-host, Nico Bryan. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. We will see you next week. Peace. If you don't stay down and you never quit, come on over here and sit on the far end of the bench.